مرحبا گڈ ایوننگ اینڈ ویلکم ٹو دا شارجہ کرکٹ اسٹیڈیم فار میچ نمبر 19 آف دا رائل فینکس کلینک ایل ایل سی پریزنٹس دا 35th شارجہ رمضان لیگ دا ایئر از 2024 ٹو ٹیمز دیٹ ول بی ٹیکنگ ایچ ادر آن ان ا گروپ اے انکاؤنٹر رائل فینکس کلینک ایل ایل سی پرینگ وتھ دا نیو نیم دس ٹائم یوز ٹو بی نون ایز فیوچر میٹرس دے ول بی ٹیکنگ آن یو اے ای کنگز 11 ہیئر ایٹ دا بیوٹیفل دا ہسٹورک دی آئیکونک شارجہ کرکٹ اسٹیڈیم وچ از آلویز ا سائٹ ٹو بی ہولڈ when you come in here every single time. Well, it is going to matter who wins the toss and for that we had Adnan Arif down there with the two captains. Good evening ladies and gentlemen and welcome to this iconic stadium, Sharjah Cricket Stadium. Well, it's the 35th edition of the Sharjah Ramadan T20 League presented by Royal Phoenix Cli Clinic LLC. Well, this, it's toss time at match number 19. It's going to be Royal Phoenix Clinic LLC versus UAE Kings 11. Let me introduce you to the three most important men. Starting from my left, it's the captain of Royal Phoenix Clinic, Asif Mumtaz, followed by the match referee, Mr. Tehseen Jawed. Last but not the least, it's the captain of UAE Kings 11, Rejoy. Home team is Royal Phoenix Clinic, who will flip the coin. Heads is the call. Heads it is. UAE Kings 11. You are toss. What do you decide? Kiya? Balling first. First, we will do balling. Is there any particular reason, uh, special reason behind this? No, there is no one. I will do balling first. Okay. Uh, you have seen the track. How will the score be for them to stop? 132 runs. 140. I will stop. Okay. Playing 11. آپ کی جو پچھلی بار تھی اس سے کوئی چینجز ہیں آج میں ہیں دو چینج ہوا ہے صحیح گڈ لک گیو اس اے گڈ گیم آصف ٹاس ہار گئے کیا کرنا چاہتے تھے آپ آنسٹلی میرا پلان بیٹنگ کا ہی تھا ہم لوگ پہلے بیٹنگ کا پلان تھا ہم لوگوں کا کیونکہ ہمیں تھوڑا رن ریٹ بھی بیٹر کرنا ہے کہ تھوڑا اچھا بڑا ٹوٹل کر کے سو کمپین کو پکڑیں گے سو جو ہوتا ہے بیٹر ہوتا ہے صحیح کیا ٹوٹل اچھا لگ رہا ہے اس سرفیس کے لیے جو ابھی تک چل رہا ہے 200 چل رہا ہے اس پچ کے اوپر نا سو ٹرائی کریں گے انشاءاللہ 200 پلس کرنے کی بیٹنگ سٹرینتھ ہماری اچھی ہے سو اپنا 100 پرسن دیں گے صحیح پچھلی پلینگ 11 سے آج کوئی چینجز ہیں ہمارا لاسٹ میں زوارن ہے اور سینڈی تو کیر نہیں ہے اور ایک اور چینج کیا ہم نے رزاق کو رائٹ تینکیو سو مچ گیو اس اے گوڈ گیم ویل لیٹ دی نیوز فرام دی ٹاس اٹس یو اے کنگز 11 ہوز ون دی ٹاس اینڈ ڈسائیڈڈ ٹو بول فرسٹ Thank you, Adnan Arif. Yes, that is the news then. Kings 11, they won the toss, choosing to bowl first. Two teams with very, very big names. That's for sure. Right at the top for Royal Phoenix Clinic, Asif Mumtaz. We saw him, the skipper. Yasir Kaleem, good to see him back. The old soldier that he was in UAE domestic cricket. Babar Ghazan for Asif Khan. Well, that's a big name, isn't it? Here in the Sharjah Stadium, expect some fireworks from him. Abdul Razak Imran Kiyani, Muhammad Zadir Zahid Colonel, good bowler, good all-rounder. Farooq Muhammad Salman Khan, Zawar Farid and Akif Raja who will also be sharing the new ball. They take the 11 for Phoenix Clinic. As for Kings 11, some familiar names. Khalid Shah at the top, also another UAE national. Matiullah, good to see him featuring here at the Sharjah Stadium. Also a very fine fast bowler. Nav Pavreja, Tahir Zaman, Naimur Rahman, Fahad Nawaz, another fine batsman himself. Saiful Rahman, Muhammad Junaid Hussain, Muhammad Naim and Abdullah Azhar also. Contributing with the bat, Muhammad Naim leading the Kings 11 in this game against the Royal Phoenix Clinic LLC. Promises to be a good, good encounter here as they all have been so far. 18 matches played and we certainly had some seriously good entertainment here in the 35th Ramadan League 2024 at the Sharjah Stadium. The Emirate of Sharjah looking beautiful as always. Architecture top notch. And the lights of this city always amaze you. And the highways connecting every area, every district to each other. Players from all over UAE they visit here, especially to this venue that we are coming to you live from the Sharjah Stadium. World record holding venue, 249 ODIs, more than any other ground in the world. 
What a fantastic highlight to have here in this beautiful city of Sharjah. Almost in the last third of Ramadan, but the cricket goes on and on here in the UAE, the domestic cricket circuit only booming and going upward as more flavor is brought in to the cricket scene here in Sharjah Stadium. Well, these are the accumulators. Sagar Kalyan right to the top. 132 runs in two matches. He made a fine century in that previous game that he played. Hamdan Tahir, his opening partner usually. Both of them, of course, featuring together for Pacific Group. 119 runs for him in his two games. So, Sam Abdul Razak at a third. He's played three matches already. So, they are, his group games are done and dusted. 116 runs for him. Junaid Hussain in that number four with 114 runs. Salman Khan, he's over there as well. Uzair Man. 95 runs for him in three games. That's not something he would like for himself. Generally holds very high standards. And Irfan, of course, for seven district as well. 92 runs in his two games. And Love Pritz Singh last on that list with 91 runs. So four teams in each group. As a reminder, they will play three, three group games. And then there is the knockout phase in which every team of the group will play a quarterfinals against the opposing groups. And then they'll move on to the semifinals and the final. So four matches guaranteed, but after the fourth one, it's about you ensuring as a team that you keep winning and make it to the final. It's been, as we've been saying, an entertaining tournament. And we hope so that this game two can be another one of those. Right then, it seems like the players have taken to the field. Salman Khan right at the top for Royal Phoenix Clinic will be opening the batting. This is the Absolute left side of the square from where we are seated. So a very short boundary onto his leg side as we watch the left arm bowler prepare to run in for UAE Kings 11. Saifur Rahman will be taking the new ball for Kings 11 as we had a quick view at the umpire ensuring that everything is all right and we're all set to go. Asif Iqbal being the one standing right now. There you go. That's the off side of the right hander. Quite a big boundary there. And that's the leg side, a short one. Fine leg is in position for him. Other than that, big vacant spaces. There is a deep mid wicket. So that'll be the one fielder in the deep on the leg side. The other fielder in the deep is the third man. Right then, Asif Iqbal will wait for that tika before he calls play. And play, he says. Sefer Rahman runs in. Ball number one. Starts off down the leg side. Will be first runs on the board in the form of an extra. There is a slip in place, which is encouraging to see. The attack is on from Kings Levin. They do know that Royal Phoenix Clinic are a very strong batting unit with a lot of experience. And therefore, as is in every T20 encounter, early wickets in the power play will be the way to get a grip of the game early on. Tries to go fuller, but this time Salman gets some bat onto it, flicks it past the fine leg fielder. Will get a boundary very, very early. In fact, the first legal delivery of the match has been dispatched. Too easy. And too much error from Saifur Rahman. You don't want to start there. You want to be pitching outside leg, outside off, beg your pardon, and get the ball coming into the right hander. Got to slip in place as well. So don't worry about the one that straightens. Needs to get his line right early on here. 
Saifur Rahman. And now the third man fielder has been brought up and fine leg has been dropped to the boundary just to give him that protection in case he errs on the leg side again. Oh, this is much better. Nice and straight. That's where you want to be with the new ball in hand. On a good length, bring it back into the right hander. That's his natural angle as a left armer. And that will bring him success. Royal Phoenix Clinics have won one and lost one in the group stage so far. And so have Kings Eleven. So both of them have all to play for to try and finish on top of the table. Nicely behind that and ensuring that he took off very soon. Salman gets a quick single and that brings Kiani to the strike for the first time. Imran Kiani, the opening partner to Salman. They've got a decent start, six runs of the first three deliveries, a boundary in it as well. Seffel seems to have got his line right in the last couple of balls. He needs to be consistent over there. Doesn't seem to have express pace, but he needs to be disciplined in his areas that he's bowling. Again, down the leg side. In fact, they're asking the question. They feel it's hit something. Well, he hasn't called it a wide, the umpire, and therefore it may have just taken his ankle or probably the straps of the pads on its way. Let's have another look. Yeah, maybe just brushing that back leg on its way to the keeper. Who <laughs> was celebrating, assuming that it's taken a part of the bat, but uh, it was too far from it. Got away with that one. Seffel could have easily been another wide or even put away for a boundary for that matter. Oh, playing through the line on that occasion. He was hoping that it will come back in as it has been, but that held its line from Saif. And a good delivery. It's very nicely bowled from Saif Rahman. That's where he wants to be. Try and get the batter driving on the up. Rise out that edge. He's got a slip in place. For that kind of shot, exactly. Khalid Shah there at mid on. Speaking to the young bowler, advising him to try and land it in the right areas. You've got to have focus as a bowler. Not get into the adrenaline and just run in and bowl. Uh, that's the problem now for Saif. This is the third time he's sprayed down the leg side. This will be obviously called a wide because it was too far down. And quite often, fast bowlers believe that then you try and get their over done with as soon as possible, especially in this format. But it's important that of those 24 deliveries that they have at their disposal, they've got to take time, plan every ball, work out the batter, work out the conditions very quickly. You don't have much time in this format. And that's much better, getting him driving again. And again, a little polite inquiry from the bowler. But he won't be given anything. End of a first over, quite a mixed one for Seth. Couple of extras, but otherwise he's been on the money. Seven for none after one. Tahir Zaman to share the new ball with Saiful Rahman and to share the com box with me in these first few overs will be Asim Sheikh. Good evening to you. Very good evening. Good to see you after a while, Samir. And it's always a pleasure sharing the com box and to talk about the game. Uh, this has been chipped almost 
Carrying to the field, a good first ball from Tahir Zaman. Khalid Shah with a right smile there. A good first ball. And the pleasure is mutual, Asim. It's been a good ride so far. Yeah, they do like to model themselves after more established stars, don't they, some of these players? And it's always good to have a role model. You spoke of Matiula, there he is, and I'm quite surprised as well. Someone who has express pace and bowls really, really quick. He's been asked to maybe come in first change, second change. We'll see. That's cut away very, very quickly. It's gone to the boundary. That one. Must have felt good off the bat of Imran Kiani. He gets off the mark with the boundary. Absolutely brilliant there. Peter did move an inch. Cracking shot with tremendous power. All the Peter had to do was just see how far the ball had gone. Only a hint of width. It wasn't too far outside off, but it was very quick to pounce on that Imran Kiani. He got the second boundary of the match, of the innings, have Royal Phoenix Clinic. Oh, this is just dragged back in length from Zaman. Nicely done. And he's also taken some pace off. So Imran Kiani threw the shot early and a good comeback from the bowler. We haven't seen too much movement on the track, but there is reward for persistent bowling on a good length. Actually, that's a reward on any given track. You hit on the right areas. Even on a dead wicket, you would be quite in trouble for the batters. And moreover, Imran Kiani, not a fan of uh, good foot movement. Yeah, he's one of those C ball, hit ball kind of cricketers, isn't he? Now they've dropped the point to a more backward point kind of position on the boundary line just to save that cut from being played. But <laughs> Imran has come down the track and looked to pull him. It really took the pace off of that one as well, Zaman. Well, absolutely. Just uh, nothing short coming through from uh, Imran. Well, he took a step forward, trying to pull that, but uh, absolutely nowhere in the line of the ball. Trying to play that short arm jab, that late movement, making it even more difficult for him. Last ball then from Zaman. Oh, very nicely bowled. This time he got some bounce as well. Kiani looked to play that on the up, but just not in the right line. Good ball to end the over. It's 12 for none. Saifur Rahman will be given a second over. Just sticking with the new ball pair. 12 for none. Not a bad start from either side. They would have liked a wicket. Kings 11. Full onto the pads of Salman. His protection down that deep square leg. He gets a single. 
against Imran Kiani on strike. Now, this is a battle I'm looking forward to see. Saif bringing the ball back into Imran, and Imran hasn't shown us too much footwork. Yeah, exactly, that's where he is stuck and he's been struggling as well. All he needs to do is just make some minor adjustments to his gameplay. And before that, he needs to realize what's going wrong. And once you do that, it becomes relatively more easy for you to make those changes and maneuver around. Oh, almost through there, almost through the gate. He looked to play a big heave towards the leg side. Saifullah just with that slight bit of movement back into the right hand. Uh, was very lucky to have got the inside edge on that occasion. Now, it's very important for uh, Salman to step up and speak to Imran that all we need to do is just make sure that we are rotating strike, not eat up too many dot balls here in the power play overs, especially, and uh, not make that decision to win the toss and bowl first look right for UA Kings 11. Once again, stepping down the track this time. It's hit his pad. I think we'll wait for the umpire's signal there. Yeah, confirmation that it's a leg by. Yeah, and you're very right. I think cricket, as much as it is a skill game, it is also a lot about your psychology. The last thing you want to do is give that confidence to the oppos opposition that, yes, you've done the right thing after winning the toss. So, good point you make there, Asim. You have to keep that in the back of your mind as well. Well, certainly it's all about uh, counter-attacking a particular decision. Go on top of the opponent and say, well, you decided to bowl first. Well, let me pay, make you pay for it. Not coming off. Well, Saifullah is not offering too much pace. And because of that, given Sharja generally is the kind of wicket that it doesn't come on when you pitch it on that good length or back of length area, Salman and Kiani have looked to play shots too early and have been found wanting. A crossover for a single, but a decent over from Saiful Rahman so far. Well, I would just like to add a note to what Samir said. Over the last couple of seasons, I'd say, earlier it was a belter. Well, this one's in his slot and he's picked that up very nicely. One bounce into the fence. Well, that's nicely executed there. No movement and he was comfortable. The moment he gives the ball enough time to swing around, that horizontal movement troubles him. Here, it was pitched up and there was no movement whatsoever and he smacked it straight down the ground. I think both these bowlers by now would have realised that you don't want to pitch it up to Imran Kiani. That's where he's at his dangerous best. And on a track like this, just going back to the point we mentioned before, you want to drag the length back good length, back of length, those are the areas that you need to be on. And mix it up, of course, you have to have that variation as well. Oh, he swung that around and it is a shorter boundary, so it will get across the fence for a maximum. Now he's catching a pace and catching it up pretty nicely there. Again, taking that uh, trigger movement towards the line of the ball, length of the ball rather, trying to take it on full, but this time making a decent amount of connection there. All he had to do was flick the ball and you can't hit a ball, hit a six as flat, flat as that. Three overs gone, it's 25 for no loss. Twenty-five for none. Zaman runs in. With offered again, but this time he won't be able to. This was that last ho ball hoik. And a good amount of connection. He was looking for that sort of a, a swivel towards the onside, but just not able to get it on the previous occasion. Glad he has finished it on a high track in terms of the run rate. Good ball again from Zaman. He's pushed that with soft hands towards mid on. And he's got a single. They've got the two deep fielders on the two sides of the wicket, one at deep square leg and one at backward point. So the length is definitely going to be 
short and on a good length. He's not going to offer anything full here to both these batters, Zaman. Well, that's going to be criminal. If you bowl, pitch it up, it's a hit-me affair on that particular one. Unless he has a bluff with a slow one that he has to offer. How often have we seen that? Once again, Imran Kiani, how many times we've seen him do that? Just stand and try and go big. No movement whatsoever. And again, beating the bat is Zaman. Nice little battle going on here between these two. So far, RC, RPC, Royal Phoenix Clinic, have done well not to lose a wicket. Done well. They could have done a lot better had they had the right shot selection in place, especially the man on strike. Yes, he's got 14 runs out of those 26, but uh, time for him to look a lot more beautiful. And that stuck to the wicket a little bit, came much slower than he would have thought. In the end, he played a decent shot towards square leg, a good, good bit of fielding there down in the deep, and managed to cross over for a couple of runs. Well, you speak of the strike rate, Asim, I think the kind of batters they have in their lineup to come. They can surely catch up, even if they are, what, 40 for no loss in the power play. They've got Asif Khan to come, Yasir Kaleem, some big names. You can't write off Babur Ghazanfar as well. He's definitely good. And uh, you have likes of uh, Akif Raja down the order, who has been making name as a decent bowling all round who can whack a few boundaries. Yeah, we saw him get some games closed for UAE, didn't we, against Scotland in that series that they lost. Could have easily got them over the line. But yeah, it's good to see bowlers also taking a, taking responsibility with the bat in hand. In this format, you definitely need your bowlers to try and go big. This time it's gone high up in the air. It will land safely. It's gone behind the fine leg fielder. Will plonk into the ground and trickle away towards the fine leg boundary. You usually don't see those sort of a Shots go all the way for a boundary. They plonk and they sink in. And on that occasion, it was hit with tremendous power. That the moment it landed, maybe on that seam, it just kept on having that momentum. Well, it's getting them somehow, Imran Kiani. It doesn't look pretty, but it's effective. It's getting the runs. 20 or 14 now. Shot again and guided straight to the keeper. Very well bowled by Zaman. That's what he's been trying to do. Bend his back, make Kiani uncomfortable, and he was very uncomfortable on that occasion. Well bowled, Zaman Tahir. He tried to escape that line there on that occasion, but didn't find it easy to get away. Look at that. Beautiful. It was a test match delivery. What a strike here coming in from UAE Kings 11. And that too by being persistent in troubling Imran Kiani. He's back in the pavilion, scoring 20 of 15. First blood here for UAE Kings 11. It's 32 for 1. Well, one Rahman replaces the other. It's Naimur Rahman replacing Saiful Rahman now. Another youngster, good to see, being given a newish ball. Ball the fifth over, but they've got the first wicket now. Now it's about applying the pressure, especially with the new man that has come in, Yasir Kaleem. They'll have to keep picking up wickets at regular intervals here, Kings 11. 
Well, absolutely, they need to ensure that they're applying that sort of a pressure, and especially with a man like Yasser Kaleem stepping out who loves to take his own sweet time and then accelerate with the pace. We'll have to wait and see. Interesting bowling action from Naimur. And that has been pulled, pulled nicely. One bounce over the ropes for a boundary. Too short, too short from Naim. Well, you can have your action like Bumrah, but you've got to deliver like Bumrah as well. Too easy for Salman to pull that away. Vacant space there, just to the right of the square leg fielder. And a one bounce boundary to start off the fifth over. Interesting, we have seen now one action emulating Mohammed Basim Jr. and now an action emulating Bumrah. Well, you have your bowlers, uh, well, you have your idols set already and then you try to replicate. That's played up ish and that has cleared the field uh, by a fair distance. Has it gone all the way? Looks like a close shave there. A good looking shot. He went through it. In fact, no, it's been signaled to four. I think he got the toe end of the bat. But I think he went that far because he finished the shot. Quite often you find batters playing that shot and checking it. But on this kind of surface, you need to finish the shot. Get the bat swing right through. And he picks up another boundary. So expensive start this from Naimur Rahman. Especially to those kids who are watching us, watching that particular shot. That's a perfect example of what happens when you finish a, a shot that is not in your control. And immediately you see uh, a half measure shot. You have a fielder in place for that. Boomra Seth definitely wouldn't like that. <laughs> well, he's getting it horribly wrong here, Naimur Rahman. Trying to go short on that occasion. Too far down the leg side. So nine runs of two legal deliveries. He's got to come back strong here. It's good to see UA Kings 11 giving these youngsters a chance, placing their faith in them, offering them this platform to try and showcase their skills. But they've got to deliver against some very big names. Oh, yes, absolutely. They pulled off a game last time they played. This is up in the air. This is a chance for the fielder. Confusion between the two, and it is Matiullah who has grasped it. Well, there should have been basics in place there, Samir. Well, from where we are seated, Asim, you can see right in the line of our side that both those fielders were converging towards the ball. And in my mind, I was screaming, call mine, mine. But I don't think neither of them did that. Matiullah and the bowler, Saifur Rahman, trying to go for that catch. It was definitely Matiullah's catch because he was the one, one running forward to it. Saifullah was running sideways and Matiullah is a safe fielder, we know that. But an opportunity goes begging. How unfortunate for the young Naimur Rahman. Absolutely. Got hit for a boundary and then made a strong comeback there. Could have been a perfect end to what was looking like an expensive over there, Naimur. Oh, trickled away past the pads. Fine leg should be able to cut that off. Hasn't got the middle of the bat onto it. Yeah, once again, you just see that shot that Salman played. Not convincing. Playing it too early, and that's why it didn't get the distance. It got a lot of elevation. I just felt that he played it a fraction too early on that occasion. Yeah, just getting the toe end of the bat. Not letting the ball come close to him. And even while pitching and moving away as well. And we saw that with the boundary he's got as well. Playing it too early. This is... A loopy full toss could have hammered it anywhere he wanted, Salman. But he had too much time on that occasion. It'd only be a single. Got away with that one, Naimur Rahman. Well, I think a good recovery coming in here from uh, RPC, Royal Phoenix League. They'll be really happy with the way they have bounced back here. And uh, someone of the likes of uh, Salman, continuing from very left in the last game, he is coming in the back of a century in the previous game that he played. Good platform this for these youngsters to express themselves. They obviously learn and only improve from here on. Nice and full. Yasir Kaleem with a nice shot middle of the bat to the fielder, but he'll manage to cross over for a single. An expensive over this from Naim Rahman. Had everything in it, boundaries, opportunities for a wicket, but 
It's finally ended. 45 for one after five. Officially played by Yasir Kaleem. There's no fielder there. So the first ball from Nav. Two full outside off and has been very stylishly carved away to the point, point boundary. Well, his natural inclination of his wrist is to turn towards right. And that's the reason he opens the face of the bat so easily and loves to exploit that area. And I think that comes in with that natural, that the attitude of trying to exploit the field setup. He has got bags of experience, Yasir Kaleem. He's played a lot of cricket here in Sharjah as well, so knows exactly what to expect in terms of the conditions. Now this one's slightly shorter, a bit of width offered, looking to cut that away. And go past the outside edge. So rotating his bowlers around is the Kings Eleven captain. Two over spells for Saif and Zaman, and then one over to Naeem. Now Nav being introduced, till no Matiullah Khan. Well, I think uh, a different role has been uh, given to Matiola. Maybe expect a lot of uh, those slower bounces coming through towards the towards the death overs, when they would probably look at focusing the likes of Babar Gazanfar or maybe an Asif Khan. I was cut quite hard. Zaman did well to get a hand to that. Won't be able to prevent the single. Yasir Kaleem gets onto the non-strikers. And not a bad start from Nav. At first ball boundary, but after that he's been. When I say he's been all right, he has been offering with, but so far, no much, not much damage done. Salman has been living dangerously. He's already got an opportunity. He needs to make good of it now. Try and take advantage. Play the long handle. Play the big innings. Bat the 20 overs for your team while the rest of the batters come and bat around him. Oh, nicely flicked away. Beautifully flicked away. That was a shot of the evening so far. That's a typical Salman Khan flick. Coming in, beautifully executed. He has the eye on the ball right till the end. Look at that. One of it goes towards the deep square. The other one flies right over the fine leg area. And this is what he's known for, Salman. Well, there's nothing too wrong with the delivery as well. It was in line with the stumps, but just the way he got across and picked it up, very nice to see. Now, look at the risk involved in that. You have to be so sure about the pace of the wicket, pace of the ball coming on to you, and then play that shot because it's it's a half no look shot, I'd say. And very nicely, immediately after the boundary, he's pushed that into the infield and crossed over for a single. Doing it very smartly so far, Salman. It looks like he is on a mission to go big. We don't praise quite a lot here in the combox. You know what happens next? <laughs> Going at uh, nine and a half and over, which is a pretty decent comeback coming in after the first two silent overs there for uh, Royal Phoenix Clinic. And they've been smart in their approach, not looking to take too many risks. Full again, carved away again from Yasir, but this time there's protection down there. It'll be a single to end. The power play overs, a good one. For the Royal Phoenix Clinic, it's 56 for one.
56 for one. The power play is done and dusted. The mini Boomerah that we are witnessing here will get a bit more protection in the deep. Just have a quick look at the fielders in position. The backward point remains. Long on, long off will be pushed towards the boundary. And they've got a deep square leg and a deep mid because of the short leg side boundary being well protected. A typical off spinner's field set up there. That's been cut away on the offside. And he starts off with the delivery outside off. Have to be careful. Anything too full and straight. Both these batters are very capable of putting them away very easily. It was expensive in the first over. We'll need to come back well here, Naimur Rahman. Well, certainly. He himself will have to set a plan for himself as to where does he want to finish in this over with the field in his favour. All he needs to do is just be disciplined. Pushing that off the back foot, Salman. I think these two, the kind of batters they are in these middle overs, they'll be more than happy to just milk the bowling around, get those ones and twos, get those six, seven, eight runs overs. And they will know that the loose balls will come for sure. And that's when they will pounce on them. It's quite often you see bowlers become desperate for wickets and then offering those loose deliveries for batters to try and take advantage of. be interesting is uh, what sort of line does he stick to for Yasser Kaleem? Tries to dig in short. And I think the execution was was fine here as far as the field positions are concerned. They got in that deep square leg which is standing more towards that long leg area. Yeah, when you're bowling short, you always have to make sure that you've got to be in line with the stumps around the shoulder height or the head of the batter. You can't be Bowling it outside the off stump or too far down the leg side. So on that occasion, like you said, execution was good enough. Now, this is good stuff. Both from the bowler and the batters, they understand that in these overs, it's all about accumulating, collecting those runs. They look for a second one there. But very well done by the bowler himself to get to that very quickly. Overall good cricket here. Very good delivery. Nicely played. Thoughtful in terms of taking that second run. And rightly denied as well by Yasser Kaleem knowing that that could have been risky. So overall, good display of cricket. Not a bad second over so far, at least, from Naimur Rahman. He's been quite disciplined in the first four balls. Oh, he's got the outside edge. This is passing the third man fielder and runs away to the boundary. A very good ball, but unfortunately, this game continues to be cruel to the fast bowlers. It looks like that long blade of Yasser came to his rescue. Looks like it has taken the shoulder. Have a close look at that. Oh, yes, the outside edge coming in play. Very, very deceptive delivery there from uh, Naimur Rahman. I think he looked to close the face of the bat just at the last moment because of that big vacant region on the leg side. And that's probably why he caught that edge because there was no movement at all from the surface. Much more short this time. Nicely sliced away. The fielder will be able to get a hand to it. And a single to end the seventh over. A good one, a decent one from Naimur Rahman. It's 65 for one. Talk more about that and for the next passage of play, I've been joined in by Adnan Arif. Adnan, welcome. Thank you, Asim. What a start for our PC, Royal Phoenix Clinic. 
though they lost the wicket in the power play, but these two have also put on 34 for the second wicket. Nicely bowled there by Zafir. This is a very interesting uh, ploy here to have three fielders on the offside in the, on the boundary ropes for Yasser Kaleem. And they've gone an uh, orthodox way for Salman. I think the line that we've seen Zafir been bowling in the last couple of matches, he's been exceptional. Yeah, today we are seeing him from around the wicket. Normally he starts with over the wicket. He's trying, he, was, he was trying to use the bigger boundary on the leg side in the earlier matches. And good to see him bowling those orthodox line and length now. But again, I think it's a lot of width on this occasion. Well, certainly a lot more to see what, how the batters go about business here against uh, Zafir. Trying to have that late cut in play. But uh, it's just that missing the line completely, Salman, on that occasion. He's got to be very watchful with the short boundary on the offside. Can't afford to give too much width. Very well played. Watchfully played. Smart cricket. Salman, he's got the start that he wanted. And he played a similar role, a similar role in the previous innings as well. Took a little bit of time at the start, but ended up beautifully with 100. Well, that, that is the class of uh, this batter. He's, been, he's made his name over the last couple of seasons here in the UAE. Went to Pakistan, played first-class cricket. And now Yasir Kaleem, well, he is known to exploit the offside field. And look at how unhappy he is. Right then, missing out on an opportunity there. Eight overs done, 69 for one. First. has been greeted with an opportunity which has been put down by Tahir Zaman. Well, that's the most unluckiest thing you could have as a bowler starting a spell. Yeah, absolutely. Did everything right there. And it's, it's very brave to be bowling short with a short boundary on the leg side. He created that opportunity put down by Zaman. And you can see straight away, not really happy, Mati, with that fielding effort. Have had a, a blistering uh, confidence booster to get uh, Yasser Kaleem out of the way on the very first ball. But this partnership is building here. Yeah. It's worth 38 runs, and that's what we've said. The key is to have the partnerships in place. Here comes Mati again. Oh, that's been hit straight back at the bowler. And Yasser with some. Sportsman spirit there, not running for it. Yeah, good to see that. That was hit really hard and hit the wrong part as well. The left knee, side part of it gets very bad actually. Straight on the bone, it's the bony area. Can't really do much. He's got to go back. Probably don't have the services of a physio 
in their team. He's got, he's got to continue. But a good delivery, good shot as well. Here comes Mati again. Oh, good delivery, loud shout, and that has been given out. It has hit straight in front, and this is what happens. This is why I always say that is a high-risk shot. The moment you miss it, the ball is definitely going to hit the stumps. This is exactly what happened there. Well, they say you live by the sword, you die by the sword. This is the sort of shot that gets him most of the runs. It's his go-to shot. But just playing the wrong line and length on that occasion. Pays the prize, caught adjacent to the stumps. He's got to go after making a good 27 of 23 deliveries. Second wicket down for RPC on 70. Seventy for two, partnership worth thirty-eight has been broken here by Mathiullah. So that ploy of holding Mathiullah back has worked. A good decision. You don't see Mathiullah, as you said, bowling in his first over in the ninth over, almost creating opportunity of the first delivery and taking that big scalp of Salman. Right, first delivery to Farid on the body, not the right sort of line to be bowling. The length was fine. That could have gone anywhere with the fine leg fielder in the circle. Gets a single and gets off the mark. And have a look at that wicket there. Well, even Salman, he would have raised his own fingers. It was that plump. You could see the off stick, some part of the leg stick. Well, you know where it is going. Unless it's high, that's gonna. He missed the line completely. He thought it's drifting towards the leg side, but it was not. Went on with the arm and caught right in front. Good delivery there to dismiss the man in form, Salman. Oh, what a delivery once again. He's pushing them on the back foot. Good to see. He bowls with a lot of pace as well. Uh, this is what happens when you let a bowler like Matiullah be on top of you. Well, he is definitely going to make you pay. And he's making them pay right now with some tight bowling at right channels. One for two in the first five deliveries for him. And this is a sort of an over that they were looking for because they were catching up on pace in terms of getting that those boundaries in play. Again, nicely bowled. Looking for that single. And Yasha screams through and makes it comfortably. Three runs off it and a wicket as well. Nine gone at 72 for two. pushed away on the offside. I think uh, they'll just try to 
play around a few overs here, get that partnership to around that 15, 20 run mark and then they'll try to express unless Zawar Farid is out here with a with a clear mindset to go after the bowling. Well, going on at 8 and over, short and wide, this is in fact played late and over the point region, will pick up his first boundary Farid there, lot of width on offer and he's cast on that opportunity. Well, I think uh, if you're con con bowling at that channel, it is very important for you to keep continuing to have that sort of a fielder behind. Because it's going to be very difficult for the batter to play towards the square leg for that sort of a line. And uh, since game awareness has to prevail here, Zafir needs to think about his plans. A better delivery. Just a single. So smartly played there by Farid. He understands that he got the boundary. So they don't require too much of a risk here. Six of the first three. Uh, that's, that's how you go about things. You need to ensure that uh, you're bowling with a plan. They're bowling to the field. A good comeback coming in from Zafir. That's an even better delivery to Yasser Kaleem. He knows that Yasser is someone who doesn't sweep the ball quite often, not towards the square leg. If at all he wants to go after the bowling, he would rather go towards mid-wicket during the fag end of the innings. Uh, yeah, I think and especially now that he's got field inside the circle for both the batters, this is a better channel to be bowling. A single conceded though, but the right line now to be bowling with. I think that's a lot better. I think a very mature approach coming in from Zafir after getting hit for that boundary. Realizing his mistake immediately that uh, that was not the channel to be bowling at Zafir. Oh, good arm ball coming in, shaping in to the right-hander and nicely dealt with as well. So, it's 10 gone at the halfway mark, it's 81 for 2. Well, 10 overs, 81 for 2. That's going to be Mati to continue his second over. A very successful over the first one. Picked up that important wicket of Salman Khan. Who's coming into the game with 100 of the previous one. New A Kings 11 will be delighted to see the back of Salman Khan. The last three overs. Just conceding 17 and picked up a wicket. A good delivery, watchfully played, allowed the ball to come to him and just guided it towards that deep third region. So good cricket all around, good delivery to start off with and equally well played there by Yasser Kaleem. So he's playing a second fiddle at the moment, a runner ball stuff from him. 
Um, this is what they require at this stage. Probably have a look at the next couple of overs, mm -hmm. see where they are placed, and probably look to go big after that. Plenty of wickets up their sleeves yet. Very good shot to pick up a boundary. Not the right line to be bowling with your fielder deep on the offside. Drifting on the pads. Easy work. Look at that. Very well timed on that occasion. Bisecting the fielders perfectly to get that boundary up his sleeve. He moves on to 26 and is the 11th four of the innings. Just one six there. So 50 runs have been scored and boundaries of the 87 they have scored so far. A fuller delivery. But there's a field just for that purpose. He's very good on that side of the wicket, Yasir Kareem. Manages to get a single. So good over so far for Royal Phoenix Clinic. They're doing it pretty nicely. The first four deliveries going for seven runs. Well, I like this plan against uh, Yasir. You have three men on the offside. Third, a backward point deep. A point deep. Just that uh, lacked execution on that front wherein he got hit for a boundary. Hitting it straight back past, no, straight back to the bowler. Good spell here coming in from Madhi, a good opening spell rather. A wicket in the first over and just gone for nine runs. On the last 3.5 overs, they've just conceded 24 runs. While the RPC was going at close to, in fact, over nine runs and over till that seventh over mark. So good comeback from them. Picking up that wicket of Salman Khan has certainly moved the momentum towards their favor a little bit. But these two are very handy batters, very capable batters. They can hit big shots. Well, nicely worked around for a single. This is uh, good cricket, good alertness of the situation there. It's 11 gone, RPC. They are 89 for two. Important for these two to assess when is the right time to cut loose because uh, this is a passage of play which is very tricky. You don't want to lose out too many wickets here. Again, nicely cut away, but I really like this proactive approach coming in from uh, UAE Kings 11 where they have set in a plan against a batter and bowl into that plan. Well, yeah, absolutely. They've done the homework, especially against Yasir Kaleem. Bowling in those areas where he's strong, he's been given the field and usually. Look at that, trying to up the ante there, Zawar Farid, and watchfully bowled there. Till the very last moment, dragged the length back and almost done him in flight there. That's a smart bowling. And if you want to play that short, sort of a shot, you need to ensure that you watch the ball where it's released and then take a step forward. And despite having that fielder in place, he has still managed to clear it. It's a short boundary and Yasir is definitely going to take his chances there. Very strong on the offside and very strong with his bottom hand. That's a proof that he has sheer power. Exactly where he likes it. Mm. You put any any amount of fielders there, he'll always clear those short boundaries. Looking to go over the covers once again. Gets that inside half of the bat. But more importantly, gets that single. Look at that off the back foot smoked it over that fielder. Nicely exploited that field setup there. Zawar was always interested in playing that sweep shot. He loves fencing that area. 
against the spinners and he has done that perfectly on that occasion. Beautifully played. Taking it on full and no chance whatsoever. Four runs written all over it. 103 for two after 12. Now Pabreja replacing Mati from the Sharjah Cricket Academy and in the last three overs they've got 31 runs without a wicket. So certainly they've got the momentum they wanted going into the business end of the innings. Skid it off from the surface. Likes to have that chit chat around with the batter, doesn't he? Always, always, he's in and around the face of the batter. Always trying to say something or the other, Nav Babreja. Likes to play those mind games. I think as long as that's within the spirit of the game, that's all accepted. He's a funny character. At times, gets really hyped up. Very good delivery. Nicely bowled. He was anticipating Yasser to step down, cut the pace off. And the kind of field setup he has here for uh, Yasser, this is a mid wicket standing not for a typical fast bowler, he's standing at a, a, a position which you usually see for an off spinner. And there's a massive gap there between mid wicket and long off. Trying to heave that on the onside, flick it over. Zawar would be really disappointed missing out on that opportunity. It was onto his pads. He likes flicking the ball and knowing the fact that it's a shorter boundary, definitely getting that feeling of missing an opportunity there. Well, I'm sure he'll find himself lucky to get away with that delivery. It was a pretty ordinary delivery with pace and with a short boundary on the leg side, a little bit of bat onto it. Would have flown away. A change in field, third man comes up. Very well bowled. Look at that, I'm sure he has something to say to Yasser Kaleem once again. The previous delivery that he bowled, he actually demonstrated that slower delivery into the surface. Well, that's, that's a good sign here for a fast bowler to push the batter onto the back foot. Opening him and then pushing him on the back foot. That's a very, very good sign. That's where you have won the battle. Now coming around the wicket. Now, this is where you'll ask a lot of questions there to the batter. That's a heave towards the mid wicket. There's a chance getting a hand to it, Matiullah. Had there been, had he covered his ground a fraction too early, it would have been a fantastic catch there. Well, he did create that opportunity. And Matiullah Khan was a very good fielder, but didn't actually get under it comfortably, always had to reach for it and could only manage to get a little bit, little part of his hand onto it. A good opportunity put down, an important one. A big wicket of Yasser Kaleem. And that's a wide signal by the umpire. Digging it short there. Enough, Babreja. Have to wait and see. Oh, good leave. Very good leave there from Yasser. Yeah, and good call by the umpire. Enough, Babreja. When you go back and look at those replays, you'll be 
fine with that umpire's decision. I still feel that this is still a grey area in the in the rule book. If the batter tries to hit it, it will be considered as one of the overs. He loses out the opportunity. Meanwhile, he doesn't, didn't lose out an opportunity to go big towards extra cover. Massive hit off the bat of Yasser Kaleem. It's a big boundary. And look at how well he has cleared it. Well, I'm sure Yasser Kaleem has a lot to say after that shot. What a shot this is. This is just bread and butter for him. Usually, it's a very good delivery to a normal batter, but to Yasser Kaleem, you're just playing in the hands of the batter. Oh, yes, certainly. And that's definitely not a funny banter for sure. Yasser would have loved it. He loves striking the ball in that area. 13 gone, 114 for two. Right then, it's going to be Mohammed Naeem, the new bowler in introduced in the over number 14. A waiver delivery to start off with, and Junaid was not able to clean that, pick that up cleanly, and that will be another run added to the total. Two extras of the very first delivery of Naeem. And it's now time to introduce my co com Samir Yunus, back in the commentary to take you through the next passage of play. Yeah, what a lovely shot to end the previous over. It was stylish and classy. From Yasir Kaleem, that's what he's known for. Slowly picking up now, uh, RPC. They've had a good partnership, these two. This is short and pulled away very nicely. And no chance for the fielder down there to clean that up. Hit in front of square and hit very, very hard. Oh, what a shot once again. Rocked onto the back foot so quickly. Read the length early and smoked it literally. Look at that. One bounce, two bounce. And on the rope. <laughs> well, we, we talk about Yasir Kaleem being strong on the offside, but that was very strongly hit on the leg side as well. So he certainly has got no weaknesses in th on that regard. Very quickly moved on to 48. Another sweep shot this time down on one knee. And get a single. So a boundary, and then they'll rotate the strike. That has been the feature of Yasir Kaleem's innings so far. Unfortunately, that's a leg by. But they'll take that single anyhow. Score moves on to 120. They took a little bit of time in this partnership to get going. And now they are looking all set. Partnership worth 51, that boundary, bringing up the 50 partnership between these two. That's in the slot, hit down the ground, but on the bounce to the fielder. So you can see the intentions pretty clear from them. They want to go big from here onwards. Yeah, just over, just under 40 balls remaining. So they do know that they need to up the ante from here. We've got a lot of batting to come, so they can't afford to now step on the gas and go big. Down the track, nicely chipped towards long on. Maybe another single. This time it's off his bat, so he'll move to 49 yards. Kaleem. Good to see him back, really. He's such a talented cricketer. Still has a lot left in him. I think he took a break over the last year from, from professional cricket, focusing on, I think, his business. But it's great to see him back. Yeah, absolutely. Shimmy down the wicket, not to the pitch of the ball, and smartly played for a single. This is what good batters are all about. They don't premeditate a shot. The moment they see it's away from them, they adjust pretty well. And these are the things that actually takes the innings longer. You hit a boundary, you pick up that single. When it's not in your slot, you respect. This time through the offside, and this will run away to the fence as well. And that will also bring up the half century for Yasir Kaleem. What a fantastic batter he is, and he continues to entertain us here with some brilliant batting. 
all that was in this lot once again bread and butter you've seen it already he hit he hit nav on towards the biggest out of the boundary for a maximum and this is just easy for him 50 up for him end of over number 14 rpc all set for a big sto score 128 for 2 spin here then Fahad Nawaz good to see him here at the Sharjah Stadium he's been given the ball in hand he will come out later to bat for Kings they will have to bat well he starts off with a full delivery outside off it's been hit towards extra cover and he's got enough protection on the offside three fielders in the deep on the off and just one a deep midfielder in fact two and a long on interesting this heavy offside field Well, intention is pretty clear from the bowler. He wants to be bowling towards that tram line, wide line, as we call it. It's a bigger boundary, and rightfully so. The idea is right, but the execution has got to be spot on. This is dragged from outside off stump. Not too much timing on it. Probably the toe end of the bat, but he'll take a single. I think that's what he wants the batter to do. Also, he's going to push it outside off. Maybe force the batter to try and drag it from outside off. That will hopefully create something from Kings Eleven. They desperately need to break this partnership here, otherwise they're looking down the barrel for a big, big total here from RPC. And as we say, there's a change in the field once again. Th there was a square leg in place. Now the square leg comes towards the offside. Just three men on the leg side, two in the deep, one in the circle, and good bowling, good channel, played wide of that deep cover fielder. They might pick up two, but the idea is right to be bowling that side of the wicket. Yeah, they want to frustrate these two batters, try out the boundary options. Well, the idea is good, and the execution needs to be very good as well. Anything straight or down the leg side, Yasir Karim and Farid will make sure they take advantage, especially because their leg side is a shorter boundary. So far, so good from Fahad Nawaz. He's a very talented cricketer. He's a very experienced cricketer. Has national experience behind him, so he knows what he's doing. Again, look, not offering anything. This time he takes the inside edge, though. Hasn't gone too far. Final leg should be able to cut that off. Well, just a single on that occasion. Once again, asking the batters to go big through the bigger side of the ground. A good bowling, as you said, so far. But he's got to finish on a high. Uh, don't allow them to pick up a boundary here because they've already got five runs in the over. Had to really extend his arms to get to that. I think Yasir Kalib is the kind of batter now that is not going to shuffle across the stumps or dance too much on the crease. He's very technically solid, relies on his footwork. So Fahad Nawaz probably knows that about Yasir Kalib, and that's why he's also gone for that, you know, heavy offside field because he's not going to shuffle around and then try and pick it up from the offside to hit on the leg side. Spot on. With an offer played over the curve field, they might once yeah. again. Oh, that's a mid field. That's very sloppy from the fielder there. The fast bowlers, they don't really bend their bend their back. This has allowed them to pick up a boundary and a very good one at the end of the over. That has made the over very big. It was turning out to be a good one from Fahad, but let down by the fielder there. Saif, what have you done, my friend? You can have a, all nine fielders, but if they're not going to hold on to it, there's no use. Ten runs off that Fahad Nawaz over. Five overs left in this innings. RPC are very comfortable. 138 for two.
Right then, Zafir back to bowl his last over of his quota of four overs. Just one over for Naeem, and he's been replaced by the captain. Has been picked up. The fielder he is getting under it. And can you imagine it fell exactly between the two fielders that were running towards the ball? One in front and the other backward. He managed to pick up a. In fact, there's only one run picked up there. Well, it had enough air time in it to come under that one. But I think the long off fielder misjudging it on that occasion probably thought it was the fielder at covers who would initially go for it. But both ending up away from the ball. You've got to pick up these wickets. If not, then you are really asking for a big score. Looking to sweep that away, has missed it completely and so has the keeper. Might just be an edge there. No, that's a bye indicated by umpire Zorgham. And not a turn on offer as well. Yeah, that's pretty strange to see some turn in the 16th over. The batter not really expecting it. Opening up on that occasion, Yasir Kaleem and going ADL towards the offside. It'll only be a single. I think UA Kings have really fail to make use of the conditions because we've seen every time it's been pitched on that good length or back of a length, the batters have struggled to connect. We've seen quite a few balls hitting the toe end of the bat and falling short of fielders. I think they haven't bowled enough deliveries in that length. This time it's full but straight to the fielder and he's dropped it, Mohammed Naeem. Unfortunate that was an opportunity to break this partnership. Well, you can't be dropping these big players. They'll make you pay. Zafir rightfully creating that opportunity once again. So, two opportunities not taken. A pretty decent hit, but there's a fielder protecting the boundary on that side of the wicket. On the bounce, just a single. So, a boundary less over so far. That's what we saw in the previous over as well. The last delivery just going for a boundary and making that a bad over. Yeah, Yasir Kalim is hanging on his back foot, especially against Zafir because he's bowling over the wicket and the ball's turning away from him. He's trying to use that angle to go big on the offside. It is a shorter boundary as well, but he's got protection. Quite a bit of it on the offside as well. Banged in short. Outside off will only be a single. So not a bad over in the context of the game for UA Kings 11. The RPC are still looking quite pretty with four overs left. 144 for two. Fahad Nawaz persisting with those deliveries outside the off stump, and rightfully so. He's been pretty decent in his first over, just not the fielder in the deep safe, not really helping the cause, letting one through the gate. Yeah, I think something's got to give in this over. Not many balls left for RPC to try and get a few more big hits, so they will go after him despite the line, the controlled line that Fahad Nawaz is bowling. I just feel like Yasir Kalim and Farid will look to do something different. And there might just be an opportunity for a wicket here, Kings 11. They need to grab the chances. And that'll be definitely a wide. Yes, he walked across, but it's still too far outside off. Yeah, the idea is right, but the execution just a little off on that occasion. But this is what happens when you're bowling to two really good batters. You don't have that margin of error working for you. Very small margins. Uh, he's not just being outside off, he's also being full there, which means the batter has to really extend his arms. 
and go big. There you go. That's an advantage. That's an example. This time he's looked to go on the leg side. But if he offers it short outside off, it's easy to cut it away at pace. But the moment you go full, you have to really come forward and drive it. Yeah, look, look at that. Nicely bowled. This time there was some turn as well. Smart bowling from Fahad there. Certainly playing in the minds of the batter. The one, this particular one spinning away. So you might see Zawar Farid getting down the track. Sits on the back foot and that's a pretty decent hit. Wide off the long on fielder who's done very well to keep it within the ropes there. Certainly saving three runs for his team. Madhula is a tall lad. It would have taken some time getting down there but he's done very well. Didn't pick it up first time but he recovered and ensured that it didn't touch that boundary. And here's another look. Well timed dive that one. And he's made sure that it doesn't touch the line. Yeah, well done, Matiullah. Saved a couple of runs for his team. <laughs> and a bit of a fumble there from his teammate as well. Not too sure what he was trying to do there. <laughs> Some backup, maybe. Yeah. Oh, another chance goes begging. Junaid Javo. Behind the stumps, look at Fahad Nawaz's face. That tells you a story. He's extremely unhappy with his fielding, with his fielders, who have dropped at least now four chances in this game. Well, absolutely got it. Nothing more he can do as a bowler. Bowling really well. Look at that. Going for that single opportunity of a run out. Wrong end, probably. It can be very frustrating as a bowler when your fielders aren't backing you up and your wicket keepers aren't taking those chances. A good over, nevertheless. There could have easily been a couple of wickets in that. A good 17th over, to be more precise. The 150 is up for RPC. It's 150 for two. Oh, very tricky bowling change here. 18th over of the match. Two set batters. This can go either way. That can be very costly for Kings Lover if Naeem doesn't get his line right here. He's already gone for plenty in his first over. One thing's for sure, Farid and Yasir Kaleem will be licking their lips because they can hit shots like that if Naeem drops it too short. No pace on it. Ample turn into the body. And any decent, half-decent batter will turn that around for a boundary. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I'm still thinking, this is a very good shot, but I'm still thinking you've got two overs of Matiullah up your sleeves, who's bowled pretty decently, picked up that important wicket also. And you have an over or two of Nav Babreja, plenty of overs for other fast bowlers too, and you're going with the spin. Might play in favour of Kings eleven. still too early, but a very tricky call there. High up in the air, straight to the fielder this time. It's caught and Khalid Shah, he's got a safe pair of hands, will make sure that they finally, finally hold on to a catch that has been offered. On that occasion, it's Farid who has to depart after having made 34. Well, that was in the slot. And Zawar Farid, who's a very good hitter towards that cow corner mid-wicket region, will be finding himself very unlucky not to middle that one. He goes out after scoring 34 of 28. And it's going to be Asif Khan Lala walking in at number 5 for RPC. 154 for 3.
on taking it on the full just on the bounce to the field that will be a couple of runs a misfield will allow them to come back for the second name not really happy with the effort he knows he is going to be bowling to asif khan lala once again well, the stage is set for asif khan isn't it we've got what 14 deliveries left he's come out here not even wearing a helmet will want to see the ball as clearly as he can and he's got one thing on his mind to try and hit the ball out of the park and he's done it many many times here in sharjah short oh he's looked to go leg side with that hit it straight on to his pad and not a bad over so far from naeem after all well a very brave decision to introduce a spinner especially against two set batters and that has really played well here for kings 11 This time he's hit it with a lot of power, and this time it's in the gap as well. One bounce into the fence. Asif Khan picks up his first boundary, and he ends this name over with a boundary. One sixty for three. Matiullah Khan starts off with that wide yorker. He's got pretty interesting feel here: deep point, deep cover, long off, deep mid wicket, and deep square leg. He's got a mid on in the circle, fine leg in the circle, short third, and covers in the circle. Well, as a bowler, what are you thinking to bowl with that kind? Yorker length. What else? <laughs> no, but that's required in the death overs. But I'm just. Very baffled with the way they've used Matiullah Khan. That's a full toss. Got away with that one. That could have easily been hammered to the fence. Now just he's bowling his third over, and he won't be able to complete his quota. And he's been the most economical bowler, and he's been the one who's picked up that first wicket. So why haven't you used this complete quota? I think the captain's missed a trick here. Yeah, absolutely. When you have the services of Matiullah Khan, who's represented UAE at the highest level, you want to make the most of him. He's not a pure batter that. you want to save his probably stamina for the batting once again looking for that wide yorker this will be a wide yeah the plan is quite evident that we are circling him go as wide as possible but you have to be very careful it's not easy that execution we normally see this happen quite a bit even at the international level trying to bowl those wide outside the off stump yorker yorkers not many bowlers are able to really be persistent in that line but it's been a good ploy so far from kings 11 they've dried up those boundaries not being able to get the middle of the bat on that correction just look at the conditions it's been a slightly on the slowish side 160 in the 19th over i think 170 175 will be a pass score i don't think rpc will be all too happy with what they've posted so far because remember kings 11 do have some very good batters in their ranks Yeah, absolutely. Remember the last game against Z Game Strikers. They were chasing a big total, and they lost by just seven runs. Goes to show the quality of UAE Kings Eleven batting unit. So they'll be pretty happy with 175, with what the score line is looking at the moment. Carved away towards the backward point region. Only be a single again. Now he's got the helmet on, Asif Khan. 
showing a bit of respect to his UAE counterpart. Yeah, he's played enough cricket with him, realizes his potential. He can definitely bowl that really harsh bouncer. And Asif Khan is a very experienced lad. He won't be making those schoolboy errors, taking the helmet off against the fast bowlers. Nevertheless, nine more deliveries. RPC would be looking somewhere around 185. Very well bowled. Very, very well bowled. This is the experience and the skill of Mati. He will be persistent on that Yorker length and he's got pace as well. So it won't be easy for Yasir Kalim to try and play those sliced offside shots that he plays so regularly. And it's been a very good over so far. Just three runs off this 19th over. Yeah, today he's looking on song, in rhythm, Matiullah Khan. Went for a few runs in the previous games, but today he's been on the money. Taking the pace off that one, that was really hit hard, but straight to the fielder. He'll be considering very unlucky himself. Yasir Karim, look at that. Cut it with his effort. Had he hit that couple of feet away from the fielder, it would have been a certain boundary. Yeah, I think Asim mentioned that point previously that mid wicket fielder is almost like a spinner's mid wicket position. It's not at that cow corner where you'd like to have your fielder against the faster bowler. And that's why, like you said, anything to the right or the left of the bowler, to the fielder, I beg your pardon, can easily run away. But still, this has been a good over. Last ball coming up. Can Asif Khan finish it with a maximum? A full toss. Gets the under edge there. Java has to give it a chase. They should cross over for a couple of runs. Penultimate over of the game and he hasn't considered a boundary. So, in the context, very, very nicely done by Mathieu Lohan. Unfortunate for him that he won't bowl his full four overs. One over left in this innings. RPC are 167 for three. It's going to be Zaman with his just third over. Bowls it smartly. Saw the batter coming down the wicket and bowls it away from the batter. Very well bowled, Zaman. Fahad Nawaz, Matiullah Khan and now Zaman have really pulled things back in the last three to four overs. They've completely killed the momentum of RPC. They're looking good for a really big one here, but they've pulled things back quite nicely. They've got five deliveries left. If they can get out of it, maybe with just one boundary conceded. I think it will be a very good effort. Yeah, absolutely. The captain at the toss, Asif Mumtaz, told me they were eyeing somewhere close to 200. Now that's drifting onto the body. And what a good connection that was. Just a whip. And that was enough. This is the sort of power Yasir Kaleem possessive. What a shot once again. This was much needed. He waited and waited, let the ball come to him, and he's flicked it over that fielder. Down a deep square leg, a much needed injection this to the score. Now then, how many more can they get? 173 on the board, can they get to 185? Now, now the look, at it, look at it, flicked it very nicely onto his pads and Tahir Zaman must be thinking, could have easily been a catch. Are looking to exploit that offside region can only find a fielder. That was a, again a good shot, but straight into the fielder's hands on the bounce. And Zaman, in that previous delivery which went for six, 
must be thinking, what have I done wrong on that occasion? Just the pure power of Yasser Kaleem. And it's a big boundary on the leg side. It's not easy to clear them. And how well did he adjust to the ball? Improvisation, as we call it, to the best. Well, he's been out there 45 balls plus, so he certainly knows how this pitch is behaving and how it's coming on. And that's the difference. You see Asif Khan playing that shot too early because he's walked out just now. So it takes time for a batter to come out and adjust and get an idea of what's going on in the center. And that's why I feel this score is par because batting is not easy. Ball doesn't come on as long as the bowlers pitch it in the right areas. There is some assistance and purchase for the bowlers. Yeah, and they have plenty of bowlers up their sleeves. RPC, it's going to be a good match, especially with this kind of a total. Takes the pace off and I think it has edged. Yes, umpire gives a straightforward decision there. I can't fault him for going for that big shot. Just the last two deliveries left. He's looked to go big on the offside and again, change of pace working for Thahir Zaman. He's bowled brilliantly today. Again, unfortunate that he's only going to bowl three overs. But he's picked up two wickets for his team and two important wickets at that. Yasir Karim, a good knock for his team. He goes for 67 or 47, four, four, five fours and three big ones in that. And RPC lose their fourth one, 175 for four. and he's missed out. Not getting any bad on to that. And in the end, RPC will only make 175 thanks to three very good overs at the death by UA Kings 11. Look at that. Full outside off again, slowing it down, Tahir Zaman. He thought he had the outside edge, but it doesn't matter because it is a dot ball. And in these death overs, dot balls are worthy of gold. 175 on the board for... Royal Fenis Clinic, New A Kings Levan. They would have thought they'll concede a lot more, but they've done well towards the end. Let's quickly look at the batting scorecard. Salman Khan at the top, scoring 27 of 23. Kiani, 20. Oh, what a good knock there by Yasser Kaleem. 67 of 47, equally well supported by Farid. 34 of 28. And just a couple of boundaries there for Asif Khan in the end, taking them to 175 for four, seven extras, helping them as well. Kings 11 will look at their bowling and will realize that they've missed out a trick in ensuring that Zaman and Mati get those full quota of overs. A lot of bowlers utilized, all of them bowling two or three overs. Only Zafir bowled four overs and he was, he conceded 32 runs. But Zaman, Matiullah and Naeem picking up the wickets for, his, for their team. But a brilliant economy rate from Mati and, of course, Zaman as well. The two main fast bowlers for Kings 11. They picked up four wickets and considered 175 runs, UAE Kings 11. Should be a good contest, this, as it is the Royal Phoenix Clinic will be coming out to bowl and defend the 175 that they've put up. UAE Kings 11 require 176 to win in their lot of 20 overs with a run rate of 8.8. We'll be back shortly with the chase.
Good evening and welcome back to the run chase where UA Kings 11, they require 176 in their allotted uh, 20 overs and we have the openers who made their way to the center. Khalid Shah, the left-handed, stylish left-handed aggressive batter. And uh, to give him company, we have Fahad Nawaz on the other end. And to start the proceedings with the new ball, it will be none other than Akif Raja. Uh, the man who has uh, adorned the UAE jersey. He has made his name for himself in the ILT20 as well. And a lot would be expected out of him to deliver with the new ball. Right arm fast, his attribute. And uh, joining me in the com box to take the first passage of play will be Samir. Samir, welcome. Thank you, Azim. This should be an exciting contest. Oh, oh. very good delivery. Very good delivery, loud shout, uh, looks like it was something to do with the ball pitching in line. I think the umpire wasn't too sure, yes, that's what he has indicated there. Maybe it was drifting down as well with the natural angle that Akif Raja brings in to the left-hander. Maybe that is one of those reasons that has created a doubt. Came back in very sharply, Khalid Shah caught on his foot there. That could be height as well. Because that did have some carry, but he's very lucky to get away with that one. Khalid Shah caught on the crease. Well, usually these close ones, even if they are referred uh, to the DRS, it still goes down as an umpire's call, even if it's flicking. But these are those cl close calls where the umpires definitely have a say whether they want to go with the batter or with the bowler. I think on that occasion, playing very safe, the benefit of doubt, going with the batter. A good first ball from Akif Raja, right on the money. That's what you want to see from your premier fast bowlers. Fahad Nawaz now will take strikes. So some international flavour here with Khalid Shah, Fahad Nawaz, Akif Raja. All three have played at the highest level for UAE. Certainly will know a few things about each other here. Slip in place. Oh, cracking drive. On the up and nicely driven in the gap. Balls racing away towards a big boundary there. And first run is on the board. And that will definitely add a lot of confidence to Fahad Nawaz and his stay out there. Nice delivery to receive first up, isn't it? As a batter, you would like to have it full outside off, and he's done very well. Just leading into that one, hitting it in the gap more importantly, and he's picked up a boundary to get off the mark. That'll make him feel really good. He's a very stylish, very technically right sound cricketer, and it's good to always feel bat on ball, first ball. Yes, absolutely. The homegrown star, Fahad Nawaz. Again, nicely played, opening the face of the bat. Didn't try to hit it too hard. The ball doesn't have enough legs. Excellent work done there by Farooq Moment. And a good relay coming in his place as well. Saving one run, they scamper through for the third. Well, it was much straighter from Akif Raja. He did play it upishly, but he was in the gap again. So, it was safe. Both fielders giving it a chase and ensuring they save that one run. Well, one thing if you had noticed on that delivery, the ball slightly holding up to onto the surface as well. And as a result, uh, Fahad just checking onto the shot, not completely leaning forward into the drive. And the good part about it is the placement, making sure that he had placed it in the gap. I'm sure Akif must have had a conversation with the batters, especially Yasir Kalim, who spent a lot of time out there. Down the track, nicely hit by Khalid Shah. This is what he does best. Boom, boom, Khalid. Taking a step forward to the pitch of the ball, and this is what was required out of UA Kings 11. Well, there's no looking back here for both the teams. They've lost one, they've played, they've lost one, they've won one, and this is a must win battle for both the sides. I think they've been quite pro proactive here, the batters, and aren't really staying and waiting for the bad ball to come to them. They're taking the initiative into their hands. I saw Khalid Shada just coming down the track, meeting the ball where it's pitching. Now it's forced Akif Raja. Try and come around the wicket here. And when you say premium, premium fast bowler of the side, if you take him for runs, definitely the team is already oh. onto the back foot. Look at that. Well, fortune favors the brave. Going in favor of the batter on that occasion. Trying to slash it hard and gets the outside edge for a boundary. What a start. Yeah, too far outside off again. Khalid Shah, because there was no slip in place, he knew that if he does get any bit of bat onto that one, he will get another boundary as well. So, brilliant start this for UAE Kings 11. They're up against a good fast bowler and they put him under pressure straight away. 
Well, three boundaries, one triple, and a single coming through in this over already. So what a flying start coming in for UAE Kings Evan. And they're definitely hitting the mighty Royal Phoenix Clinic uh, LLC side big time here. Last ball of the over coming up. Akif Raja will want to be try and want to try and be disciplined. I think he's looked to go too full. That's been his problem. Like I said, he must have had a chat with Yasser Kaleem, asked him a few questions about what the pitch is doing. Right then, a feeling change there. Deep midwicket has been dropped to the line and third man comes up into the circle. Anticipating a short delivery here. Maybe, maybe not. Well, all what I think is uh, Khalid might fancy his chance by giving him room and slashing it on the offside. Oh, beautifully bold. Deceiving him in the air. A good slower delivery. He wasn't anticipating that. So good finish coming through for UA Kings 11. 17 for no loss after the end of the first over. Mohamed Zahid has been introduced into the attack and uh, a nicely played defensively by Khalid Shah, taking a single on the first ball. Now, Zahid has been that resource which uh, Royal Phoenix have been using him in the latter half of the innings, where the ball slightly loses out its shine, where he has a lot more control on the ball. And uh, will be an interesting ploy how he goes about things with a new ball. I think we haven't seen any swing. Hasims, that's probably one reason that they've asked him to bowl with the new ball. It gives him that control to try and land it wherever he wants to. And on the leg side on that occasion, it will be called a wide. And you were right, I think one thing you get with Zahid is sometimes with the new ball, he does spray it around a bit. And I think he has to, he has to be on the money here because they're off to a good start, UA Kings 11. Well, they have to be very watchful here. Zahid is someone uh, who has a lot of uh, reputation behind his uh, back. Someone who would uh, love to have a battle within a battle. And meanwhile, it is Fahad who continues to onslaught, who continues to play positive brand of cricket. But there are these young, homegrown talents that we talk about, Asim, whether you take Fahad Nawaz or the guy likes of Ronak Panoli. So great to see them play such fearless cricket even against some of the best bowlers here in the domestic circuit. He's come down the track again, being proactive, the batters, not waiting for things to happen, taking the attack to the bowlers. And that's one way of chasing big totals here at the Shards Stadium. Well, gone are those days where you have to fear the imported materials from the subcontinents. You need to fear the homegrown talents because they've seen how the wicket has been playing, how to mature around yourself during your stay in the crease. And that's where these players like Ronak, as you specifically mentioned, has uh, troubled the opposition a lot. Yeah, born and brought up here, they know the conditions a lot better than some of those who have made the way here into UAE, finding their feet. Good comeback delivery that from Zaid Colonel, bending his back. Nicely glided down towards the third, balls racing away, a dive in place. And uh, that will be a boundary there for uh, Fahad. Yeah, we get predictable. The previous delivery also of a similar length. And Fahad Nawaz almost knew that was to be expected. 
a dive in by the field and in the process he's lost his trousers <laughs> it's not only the shoelaces that you need to tie it uh, tie it tight man in order to avoid those scenes you need to ensure all the laces have been tied up nice and firm yeah, full again so really mixing up his length here zaid colonel bowlers have struggled to find that perfect spot here on this on this pitch i think it's as much as possible you got to be back of a length and in line with the stumps because then you're really pushing the initiative back to the batter try and hit me if you can well certainly i think uh, if you fall back to the first innings recall how tahir zaman bowled in the first spell he was immaculate and he was troubling imran kayani there and i think that's how you have to target and that those are the areas that you need to ensure that you're targeting as a fast bowler this is much better a good way to end the over however he's given away 11 runs and uae kings 11 continue to prosper with this good start 28 for none after two Akif Raja continues top edge and uh, Asif Khan will cover it up so the positive brand of cricket continues here from uh, Fahad Nawaz he wants to go berserk and he wants to make full use of the fielding restrictions here and some not a bad way to go about it and that's what you expect from your openers don't you in the marble you want them to set a platform you want them to set a foundation and the best time to do it is in the power play because you've got that extra bit of areas to exploit once you pass the infield and fahad nawaz i think we all know such a he's such a daring aggressive cricketer he likes to play his shots and he's not going to shy away and given that they are chasing a decent total he knows that he needs to get, get his team a good start again he's playing around the, with the pace here against uh, khalid shah did his work but uh, a misfield from babar ghazan will result in a single Won't definitely hear pleasant words from the skipper Asim Mumtaz for sure. Well, fielding is one thing that has been disappointing throughout the day today for both sides. I was here last a couple of days ago calling a Pacific Group games, and we did an interview with Muhammad Wasim, the UAE skipper, and that's one thing he mentioned. He said the one thing I've learned from all these international league experiences is that our fielding standards really need to improve in the domestic circuit. That's the only time we start to become a serious force in world cricket. A nicely bowled, very good comeback there from Akif. This time nipping it into the right hander, not giving him room to free his arms. And this is where you have to learn quickly within uh, and learn to understand what the batter's mindset is at the moment. And anything that was uh, offered width, Fahad and Khalid both have gone berserk after that sort of a length. But anything wherein they are being cramped for room, they are struggling. Yeah, I think he's learnt his lesson from the first over, Akif Raja. He's just really pulling the length back and trying to be as straight as possible. Sometimes you gotta adjust very quickly given the conditions. A short ball on that occasion, very well directed. Khalid Shah will bend and let that one go away. So he's coming back quite nicely here, Akif Raja, after going away for quite a few in the first over of his. But they need wickets. That's what they require. The Royal Phoenix Clinic. The diagnosis is quite clear. wickets early on especially of these two batters who have lots of experience and can take you apart on their given day but to add to that khalid someone who uae kings will be backing to play a long innings because he's the only promising left hander in the side and with the kind of uh, dimensions do we have for for the ground 
you'll have to ensure that he plays long innings here. Quick single onto the offside. That's one thing we've seen the batters do quite well. Playing it with soft hands and crossing over very quickly. Ekharicha is also not one of those batters who looks to use his feet too much. Sometimes he's found wanting against the ball that's hooping around. But on this track, he'll enjoy batting. Especially because there's not much movement on offer. You can expect a lot of quick adjustments coming in. Especially with a leader like Asim Mamtaz uh, taking the field, talking constantly with the bowler as to what the plan has to be. That sort of uh, adjustment in him. Look at the comeback that is coming in, that has come in here from uh, Team RPC. Yeah, it's a quick learner, Akif Raja. Fahad Nawaz once again looking to use his feet. This time he's dragged the length even further back. Slightly outside off, but he'll get away with that one. And a brilliant, brilliant comeback in this over. End of three is 32 for none. Zahid will operate from the Bukhadar end. Good delivery outside the off And if you see, Khalid looks a bit hesitant now. That movement, that trigger movement, he is looking a bit nervous, a bit uh, on the back foot. Just not trying to open his arms there, not able to open his arms there. It just takes two or three deliveries to cast that seed of doubt in a batter's mind. And that's when you start exploiting those loose shots. Oh, carved away very, very nicely. No doubt in that one from Khalid Shah. It was full outside off and he was quick to pounce on it. Aerial, but very, very safe. In the power play, there's no protection down there in the deep. Well, this is where you should avoid erring in terms of your line. Look at that. Anything, width on offer, all Khalid had to do was just give direction to the ball. Timing was pitch perfect. All he had to do was place it in the right direction. 36 for no loss. And still, a very, very decent start here coming in from uh, UA Kings 11. Now, very interesting in that shot that he played, I'll say, is that generally you'll find coaches tell you that if the ball is outside off, get your front foot towards the ball. But on that occasion, he cleared his front foot towards the leg side and went with all bat. Yeah, just like that again. But this time, he's gone over mid off. And it's one bounce into the fence again. Positive cricket. Again, slight width on offer. Khalid ensuring. That he had that trigger movement, his natural trigger movement, getting to the, getting closer to the stumps, and taking it as a half volley. This is excellent cricket here from UAE Kings 11. Azai has been too full, one outside off, one straight with the stumps. You can't be bowling that length against someone like Khalid and Fahad. They will maximize and take advantage. He needs to pull his length back, and I think because he wants to do that, he's got third man up and sent mid on down to the boundary. There you go, much better. Had to wait a bit till the ball came to him. A quick single, a direct hit would have had him. And there'll be a misfield as well, allowing them to cross over for an extra. This is good cricket here. Good alertness. Not a big follow through coming in from Khalid, which has helped them scamper through for that second. The steal that stole that second run. Khalid had given it up for all money. Good cricket. Positive mindset. This is what uh, UA Kings 11 have got it right here in this game. They lost it in the previous one. A close encounter. A very good delivery. Off pace delivery from uh, Zahid and ensuring that Khalid had doubts in his mind to throw kitchen sink at it. Yeah, we saw that even in the first innings, playing it a little too early. The ball's not coming on as quick as they would have liked to like it to the batters. And they've had their troubles in making their adjustments. Zaid Kernel, after a couple of full deliveries, has now decided that he's going to go back of a length, try and dig it short. Last ball of the over coming up. Beautifully played. Again, a shy at the stumps. And decently backed up there by Salman. So it's end of four, it's 43 for no loss.
Well, I think if uh, they get the plan right, this can turn out to be a very good move here for RPC. Off pace deliveries would be very key. The channels are going to be very key because uh, the likes of Fahad, who loves to have that sort of a room outside the off stump, it'll be very difficult for him to clear the ropes. They would m try to maximize the remaining 11 deliveries and get as many runs as possible. But after that, it has to be RPC who needs to really get back into their groove. The top order batters do like pace on the balls. The moment you take it off, it takes a lot of adjustment to try and get some power behind your shots. Yeah, there you go. He's decided that he's not going to give him any pace whatsoever. Farid, he was also out there batting for quite a while, so he knows exactly how this pitch is behaving. And so far, he's understood the assignment. Right amount of pace at the right channel with the right field setup is something which is going to be very key. And Farid has got it spot on for the first two deliveries. This is where a thinking skipper like an Asif Mumtaz or a Rohan Mustafa really play an important role as to what the bowlers are supposed to be doing. Slices that up. And that uppercut will fetch him a boundary. Not a very good decision there from Zawar Farid. And uh, dividend paid there for Khalid Shah. Yeah, not sure why he wanted to change the length. It was going well for him. The moment he dragged it back, Khalid Shah, because there is no protection on the off at all, was more than happy to just get his bat, hit his bat as hard as possible. He knew the moment it passes the infield, there's a boundary written all over it. Here comes Zawar again, making room for himself. Zawar following, but followed way too much. Good adjustment coming through from uh, Khalid Shah. 50 up with the help of that wide. So far, so good as far as the extras are concerned. Just three of them conceded here by RPC. Our UAE Kings 11, they have a flying start here. Yeah, exactly what they need at 175 is a total. They will fancy themselves chasing, especially mm -hmm. the kind of batters they have at the top of the order. And they know very well that they need to get that good start because getting runs through those middle overs is not going to be easy with the spinners in operation and the field spread. They'll have to bat smart here. Oh, nicely bowled. That is a channel that you need to be consistently bowling at Khalid Shah and ensure that you don't offer room to him to free his arms. Kept him silent, keep him silent. Yes, he's batting on 29 of 18, but it's just that he hasn't been seen in that free flow unless the ball has been given to him at his strengths. Drifting down the leg, nicely collected by Yasser Kali, but he'll have to re -bowl that. Yeah, you just noticed what Fahad Nawaz was doing there. He was batting. Just outside those leg stump, that leg stump is exposing all three stumps of his, maybe trying tempting Zawar Farid to go full at him so that he can open up the offside. He did go full, but it was too far down the leg side. Let's see if he continues to do that, Fahad, here. Again, if he bowls full on the pad, there's going to be an easy flick on the onside there. Oh, very good shot. Ensuring he had decent amount of connection and looks like it has gone all the way for a maximum. Brilliant hitting here from Fahad Nawaz, toying around with the bowler and uh, playing with the mind. One of the nicest looking cricket shots, this. Going over extra cover, in between extra cover and long off. But when it's aerial and when it goes all the way, it's always such a nice sight for the batter to be able to play a shot like that, holding your pose, presenting the full face of the bat. And especially when it goes all the way, it's a good feeling. Again, a very good shot, a dive in place. Unable to stop that within the circle. And Asif Mumtaz will chase it down. A couple of runs for U18-11. This has been a fantastic start here. Going at 12 and over in the first five. It's 60 for no loss.
Asif Mumtaz has been introduced, and this is poor stuff in the field. It was a straight forward collect, and the fielder made a mess of it. The misery continues for Royal Phoenix Clinic. And these two batters have done very well to get UA Kings 11 off to a brilliant start. First over of spin, and it starts off with a boundary. Well, Asif doesn't want to believe that that was that has gone for a boundary. What was supposed to be a dot ball has resulted in a boundary. So a positive start here. The deficit has come down 112 of 89 now. Oh, this has been cut away pretty nicely in the gap once again. Back-to-back -back boundaries here for Khalid Shah. This is brilliant batting. Oh, look at the look of confusion from Asif Mumtaz. Not a bad delivery, mind you. That was all Khalid Shah using the angle very nicely. Look at that, how nicely has he played that. That gap between cover and point isn't too big, but he's found that with precision. Pick up another boundary here. Well, you can't blame the bowler there. It was a stand and applaud situation for the bowler. Excellently played. He played it right from the top of the bales on the off stump. And he played it in the gap to perfection. And look at that, one fielder added extra on the offside. That could have easily chopped on Khalid Shah with no foot movement at all, just standing there and looking to pad it away. But a good comeback ball, this. So Asif Mumtaz picking up a leaf from Fahad Nawaz's bowling tactics, packing that offside field and offering nothing on the leg side. It's cut it away again, but that extra fielder being put to good use here. There's an overthrow as well. Nothing going right here for the Royal Phoenix Clinic. Well, they did the, the first part of the job pretty nicely, ensured that the ball didn't pass through, but the pick up and throw wasn't that great, especially the throw. Sometimes as a fielder, when you've done a good job out there, stop the ball that adrenaline gets to you, you want to try and affect a run out, impress the skipper, but he's done the complete opposite. Yeah, he's peppering that offside, Khalid Shah. Fielders have had to dive around trying to stop that ball. Another single considered off a misfield. Well, I think they are losing out in patience here. This was that uh, wavered throw from Akif Raja. He did, the, did half of the job correctly apart from that. Yeah, that's the frustration showing on the skipper. Hasn't bowled badly to be honest, but his fielders have really let him down. Right then, last ball of the over. Fahad Nawaz is going to face it. What a run chase this is turning out to be. Nicely paid with. Soft hands, quick single. This is good cricket. Very good cricket here from Fahad. Single of the last ball, 72. After the first six overs. What a flying power play here for UA Kings 11. Leg spinner has been introduced here from the SCA end. It's Farooq Moman. Played it towards extra once again, trying to exploit that area. A misfield will result in a couple of runs. It was always on, made it even easier. Well, the fielding has been really, really poor from both teams today. Whether it's Kings 11 or RPC, they've just been very, very disappointing. I think this last over of the power play was quite an expensive one 
but it seems like these two are not going to apply any breaks. They will continue to be aggressive. Nicely driven, but straight to the fielder. In fact, it's gone straight to his hands for a catch. Against the run of play, Fahad Nawaz has hit that full delivery outside off, straight to extra cover. Well, it was hit so fiercely, it felt like it, as if it has kissed the ground and has gone all the way. But nicely held there by the fielder, ensuring that he didn't disappoint on that occasion. So immediately after the power play, the first blood here drawn by RPC. Now, is that a change in fortunes here for them? We'll have to wait and see. It's 74 for 1 after 6.2. Nawaz looking to drive that on the field, that cover. Good catch, much against the run of play. But finally, RPC has one opportunity here to try and apply some pressure in this run chase of Kings 11, who have done very well. Good start to them. Oh, nice full toss, but Junaid will just push that towards long off. He's just walked out, knows the importance of spending some time out there, and gets off the mark with that single. And that's been the feature of batting here. Yes, Khalid Shah has been off to a start, 40 off 23, so he's taken no time to get going. But we saw in the first innings, Yasir Kaleem took some time to settle in and then once he was in, he was playing some glorious strokes to all parts of the park. Khalid Shah, though, has been going bang bang from ball number one. It's important that he now stays out there, bats the long innings for his team. He stitches a partnership with Junaid. Well bowled, nice and straight. Coming back into the left hand, Farooq has been very accurate. Not easy for a wrist spinner to come back and come in and find your spot from the first ball. But Farooq has done that very, very well here for the Royal Phoenix Clinic. He's got one delivery left. Can he finish off well? Already picked up a wicket. Khalicha has made room for himself. That ball kept low and went the other way. So he's pushed that towards long off and got a single. A successful over the seventh one. Farooq has given away four runs and picked up a wicket. Your Kings 11 are 76 for one. And when we come back, there will be a change in voice. Adnan Arif will be joining Asim Sheikh. Seven over 76 for one. Khalid Shah looking really good. 41 of 25 deliveries. Janet just joined in. There was a wicket in the last over. Farooq Momin picking up his first wicket of the match and first wicket for his team. They've gone to a fly start. What a start this has been for Royal, for in fact UAE Kings 11. And Asif with the second over, he'll be looking to pick up a wicket here. Junaid has just been joined, who's the top scorer for UA Kings 11 in at number three. Played watchfully there. They've got to be very careful with those singles and doubles. Can't afford to get themselves run out here.
again hitting the field and trying to take a single not the right ploy just wait for it to just go past that field take those easy singles they've done, they've got a good start a full delivery on that occasion apish but safe he'll take a single what a good opening partnership that was asim between fahad nawaz and khalid shah in excess of that 100 runs as soon as possible oh what a shot that was in the slot and that has been sent into the orbit by khalid shah oh what a shot that was in the slot and out of the park well he was really quick to pounce on that delivery really knew his strengths there and almost took the cameraman out on that occasion A good shot once again. Smart cricket picks up a single. The very next delivery itself. So seven of two deliveries for Khalid Shah in this over itself, and that's another single added to the total. Eight overs done, 85 for one. Well, going at 10.6 and over, they seem to be pretty comfortable. UAE Kings 11 don't need to be doing anything fancy here. Farooq Mohammed with his second over, full toss, low full toss, missed out on that opportunity. Well, not the best way to get to his 50, but he'll take that. A brilliant innings here from Khalid Shah. 50 of 29 balls, and he needs to ensure that he carries his bat along. Seven dot balls in that. Look at that consistency. of ensuring runs on board with every delivery that he has faced well 34 runs scored in boundaries that explains to you how well has he utilized the power play short and wide and they'll take a single he knows that he, it's just half job done at the moment for his team he needs to ensure that he takes them over the line if not at least take them closer to that target of 176 someone really needs to stand up here for RPC Farooq has definitely given them that breakthrough but there has to be someone who bowls in partnership with him what a wrong on there that turn square you're well read in the end by Khalid Shah really expecting it especially the line where he started it from it has got to be the wrong one it was pitched outside the leg stump fifth fourth or fifth stump channel and then it had to just go away and very well read and very well played in the end Nicely played with soft hands there, but Junaid, looking for that second run. Well, he'll have to settle for a single. I think this is a very smart move here to ensure that Junaid has sent up the order. He batted at number three in the previous game as well, where he almost brought glory to UAE Kings 11, except for that dismissal in the last over. Yeah, and that move to change the top order, bringing Fahad Nawaz, really worked in their favour. Lahiru struggled in the previous match. Uh, what a good start this is good running from these two very well run S hit in the right areas ran the first one hard this is really good cricket from khalid shah taking that risk factor away this is excellent cricket coming in from uh, uae kings 11 and lahiru and tharindu not getting a game today crucial game I think they just went in with whatever made sense. Nicely played. Late cut coming in for uh, Imran. Uh, sorry for uh, Khalid. Imran putting in that chase will be a couple of runs to finish the ninth over here. Ninety-three for one after nine.
what's going to be interesting here is uh, how Asif Mutaz bowls against Khalid. Does he try to be defensive here? Does he continue to attack? Because the required run rate now is hovering at under 8 and over now. 7.5 to be precise and how well is Khalid Shah playing? Normally you see him going bang, bang, bang. And here we can see some transformation in his game. He's brought that middle game that we call it, singles and doubles into play. And that has been the hallmark of his innings. Mixed it up pretty well with those boundaries. You've got to be smart enough to bring those uh, adjustments in your gameplay, especially when you're chasing. And in the interim, looks like Yasser has injured himself. That quicker delivery fired down the leg side. And it looks like uh, just flicked his fingers there. Yes, that would have hurt. You can understand how badly that hurts if it comes in, hits it on the top. That's really painful. Looks like uh, Yasser is settled. Or goes through the gate, or in fact, he over anticipated the spin on that occasion. Ball didn't turn too much and missing the line completely. Oh, yes, it was the Dusra. And look at that, just a little bit of stare. And what a wicket this is! What a wicket this is, Junaid Hussain. The top scorer for his team, UAE Kings 11, has to depart on five of nine deliveries. Or can this be the change of fortunes for Royal Phoenix Clinic? 95 for two. Well, another top scorer for UA Kings 11 is in at number four. Abdullah Azar has got a job in hand. They don't, they don't need too many runs and over here. They're going along nicely. It's just the wickets column. Probably losing the wicket at a very wrong stage. Good amount of turn coming through. He's bowling it slow. This is where Asif has made that sort of an adjustment which is good, which is coming in their rescue. And he'll try to keep the right-hander on strike as much as possible. Oh, nicely played in the gap. And we'll get that single. Asif is livid. At the halfway mark, 10 overs gone, 96 for 2.
slight breaks onto the scoring and that's been a, a very positive sign. What that has done is that has given Asif Mumtaz a breakthrough as well. Off the backboard, straight to the fielder and Asif is not happy. Captain himself misfielding on that occasion is not happy. Yes, this is a... Have a look at that wicket here. That was a wicket of the previous delivery, previous over rather. He played for the turn on that occasion, over expecting and just missing it on that occasion. Oh, nicely bowled, beautifully bowled. And this is where RPC really needs to go back and rethink on their strategy. They really need to get start to bowl a bit slower through the air. They're bowling and giving that pace to the batters, which they are accepting it. Cut away over the fielder, a chance, a half a chance. Quicker delivery on that occasion and resulting in a boundary. Off the back foot, look at that, that was a quicker one. Khalid, oh, that was a difficult one. And immediately, Farooq Moment indicating that you should be standing at the circle. You cannot be coming in so close. I think that's one of the reasons maybe he just fell short. Everyone lost the ball. Everyone. Khalid, the wicketkeeper. 100 up already here for UA Kings 11. 75 more required of 56. Now, if you just look at the comparison, I think they are well ahead of the game at the moment. Yeah, absolutely. It's just that Khalid needs to ensure that he plays majority of these 10 overs. At least take it towards that 18th over mark. Because if he's there, he'll certainly, be, he'll certainly take the game very close to the total. If not over it. A pretty decent over despite conceding a boundary. Was down the wicket. A pretty decent connection, but straight to the fielder. It'll just be a single to end over number 11. UA Kings 11, 102 for 2. Bowling it flat and hard to the left-hander. Happy to see the back of Khalid towards the non-striker's end. <laughs> He'll be happy to bowl to the new batter, Abdul Azhar, on that occasion. He's facing just three deliveries so far. And he played a up his shot to get off the mark as well. Well, he would love to bowl a lot to the off, uh, to the right-handers. Usually, you do not see an off-spinner preferring to bowl to a right-hander, but with the dimen field dimen fielding dimensions and uh, with the ground bigger on the onside, he would prefer to bowl to the right-hander, yeah. Your right hand to be choosing to bowl from as an off-spinner. You've got plenty of real estate on the leg side. It's not the right line to be bowling. He's got to be on the stumps channel, probably end up on middle and off. That's why you have maximum chance of picking up a wicket. Well, I think uh, he's just trying to have some silent overs here, boundaryless overs. I'm not trying to pick up wickets here because uh, they've got one. Now, now this is a time wherein you m try to maximize. Well, Khalid has different plans. He has sent one on the roof. He said, well, better luck next time to have a silent over. I'm not going to say silent. Well, that's not a bad delivery, but it's just pure 
class of execution. Look at that. How well has he executed it? Using those long levers to his advantage. Not in line of the ball. It's just hand-eye coordination as you call it. And this is what and how he likes to play. Khalid Shah picks up a maximum at a very crucial stage of the innings. This was another quiet over that was pushed in. Another, another maximum for Khalid. Moves on to 68 of just 41 deliveries. Look at that. No, this is positive cricket. You are not letting the opposition settle down. Even if they're picking up wickets, you are continuing to play the positive brand of cricket. And you see the tensions. Tension on the face of the skipper. Asaf Mumtaz, he's getting a bit worried now. Required run rate at 7.7. .7 and uh, the intentions look loud and clear here from Khalid that he doesn't want to let that required run rate jump beyond 8 and over. Yeah, 64 required of 50 deliveries. It's just a matter of three boundaries that they need to find anywhere in those remaining 50 deliveries. Just three boundaries. So they need to play smart cricket here. Don't go bang, bang. But Khalid Shah, it seems to be in a different mood. I think this has gone out of the stadium, not even on the roof. This has gone out of the stadium. There's no way that's coming back here anytime soon. Time for new balls, please. Once again, within a fraction of... 40 seconds, he has lost two good balls here. Well, he knows this ground, this pitch, in and out, and today he's showing it to the entire world. Brilliant hitting. Moves on to 72, 74 of just 42 deliveries. Could you have asked for more? Khalid Shah coming and showcasing his pure class in an all-important match for his team. Another one. Make that three in a row. And that's a hat-trick here of sixes for Khalid Shah. He has taken Asif Mumtaz to the cleaners. 45 in his four overs quota. And the deficit, well, let's not talk about it. It's well within reach here for UAE Kings 11. This is massacre from Khalid Shah. Well, Khalid Shah at his best. This hand-eye coordination once again. Not in line of the delivery, but it was just those long levers once again and power behind it. First one, out of the park. Second one, even further. Same direction there. It just kept on going. And third one, quite similar line and length of the first one, but direction slightly squarer. Closer to our cameraman to fetch the ball. Well, just 52 required of 48 deliveries. Farooq Moment with his last over of his quota of four overs. Can he produce a magic here? Now, this is intelligent stuff here from Abdul Azhar. Knowing the fact that Khalid is in his die die mood. Just look at his, look at the eye. Very determined to hit him out of the park. And this is brilliant stuff from Khalid Shah. What's more important is the stability of the head. How stable that head was, despite those arms going through the shot, his head was very stable. And that's how you execute those big ones. Watch fully played. Smart cricket. Don't want to be chancing the arms here with the longer boundary towards the leg side. Smart cricket from Khalid. Well, I think anything that would have been pitched up to him on the offside area, he would have still fancied his chance towards extra cover. I think the intentions are loud and clear from Khalid is that he, wanted, he wants to target the shorter boundary whether it's on the off or on the on the onside. Nicely bold and equally well played by Abdul Azhar. He's doing the right job from the other end. Just making sure he brings Khalid back on strike more often than not. On to six of seven deliveries. And look at that partnership. Already 32. This six scored by Abdullah. And that goes to show the dominance of Khalid Shah in this partnership. Absolutely dominating here. Oh, beautifully bowled. He's relying on those wrong ones against the left-handers. And he's bowling at the right channels here. But is it too late? And looks like uh, on their way to exit RPC. Still too early to say. A lot of game left here. But well within the balance here for UA Kings 11. Well, he understands the importance of his wicket, Khalid. You're not going for those dang dang shots. <laughs> Very watchfully played in the end by Abdul Azhar. Just making sure that they don't lose wickets here. 
don't go for those glory shots though he has a short boundary on the leg side but he's playing sensibly they've got the runs they wanted in the previous over and the run rate is quite under check picks up a single of the last delivery in fact that's played wide of cover there was an opportunity to pick up a second but they were well determined to pick up just a single so a single to end over number 13 kings 11 1 2 9 for 2 Right then, change in bowling, and there'll be change in the voices here in the com box. It's Samir Yusuf replacing Samir Yunus replacing Asim Sheikh. Sorry to get your name wrong on that occasion. Thanks, Adnan. My father will be bowling in his grave if he heard <laughs> that. It's been a real, real masterclass batting here from Khalid Shah. He's been brilliant with his aggressive strokes, with his power hitting, and I think they've done a very smart move here. In the way they've batted early on, they got the runs on the board in the power play, got, got themselves off to a good start, Fahad and Khalid both. And then they've played the ball to its merits and they've also chosen who to go after. Look, Farooq picked up the wicket and he was bowling well. They gave him that respect even in the previous over. They didn't want to take any risks against him. But the moment they had Mumtaz who was bowling loopy off spinners and Khalid Shah had his leg side on the shorter boundary, he went for those big shots. So very smart, very tactic, tactically correct. And that's why they're sitting so comfortable in this game. They're very calculative. Well, shorter boundary towards the leg side. Khalid Shah will be taking Zayed Kanal on here. Plays it watchfully. That was a pretty decent delivery. Bold with pace in the right areas. And Khalid Shah is looking a million dollar out there in the center. 83 of just 46 deliveries. I love how he's paced his innings, Khalid Shah. When it's there to be hit, he's not afraid to go after it. And when the single was an offer. He's more than happy to take it. Trusts his partner. And Abdul Azhar has played a decent hand here. He knows that his target is well within reach, so there's no need to do anything crazy out there. If they back the 20 overs, they will get to that target quite comfortably. Another single. Yeah, absolutely. Just a matter of one boundary to be hit anywhere in those 40 deliveries and they'll have the game in the pocket. So far, it's in their pocket. It's only their game to lose. They've just got to manage those singles and doubles and find that odd boundary. Well, Phoenix will be hoping they had one more bowler who bowled somewhere close to how Farooq did for them. And things would have been very different. Fortunately, the rest of the bowlers haven't really lived up to their expectations. Oh, he's gone back. And he's chipped that straight towards point. Akif Raja will complete the catch. Now then, Khalid Shah for the first time playing a shot in error. And he loses his wicket. Pulls it into the pitch, Zaid Colonel. He's looked to open up the leg side again. But it goes up and an easy, simple catch for Akif Raja at point. And finally, they get rid of Khalid Shah after a brilliant, brilliant innings from his really put his stream on the path to victory. 83 of 47, it's four massive sixes and eight boundaries, a super strike rate of 176. He's done his job for the team, walks away at the fall of the third wicket. 132 for three.
important situation for his team. The set batter Khalid Shah has just departed and he's replaced with another left hander, Muhammad Naeem, out with his pink pads. Flashy out there. But Colonel has provided the breakthrough for Royal Phoenix Clinic. Now it's time for them to apply a bit of pressure and dry up the run scoring. Nice full length delivery outside off to start things off. He's driven that to Farooq out there at the deep. We'll get off the mark with that single. 43 required of 37. Should be a comfortable run chase here unless Royal Phoenix Clinic can muster up something different here. They need one of their bowlers to put their hands up and bowl a special over or two. Pick up a couple of quick wickets. Apply the pressure back on the batting team. They've been under the pump, the bowlers. Thanks to Fahad at the top and then Khalid Shah who's made a solid 80 for their team. Nicely guided towards point. They were a bit hesitant initially. But they've managed to complete the single quite comfortably. The fielders will be on their toes on the 30-yard line. And therefore, that single became easier. Good over. A successful one for Colonel. 14 done. It's 134 for 3. Just 42 runs required. They've now gone to their premier fast bowler to try and pick up another wicket here. Back of a length push towards the leg side will be another dot ball. If they can get through a couple of overs of just three, four runs here, Royal Phoenix, then the pressure will be back on the batting team. That gap between runs and balls, the moment it goes past 12, 13 runs, that's when the pressure starts telling on those batters out there. Vilazar has been pretty quiet so far because Khalid Shah was doing all the scoring. He's gone into a shell, but he can't afford to now bat like that. He needs to be proactive here. Try and keep rotating the strike as much as possible. Get those seven, eight runs per over. That's nicely pushed towards long on. We'll get a single and bring the left hand and Naeem onto the strike. Well, that wicket of Khalid Shah, certainly some life has been breathed into the innings. And they'll certainly be feeling they are in the game here, RPC. Khalid Shah was actually taking the game away from them with his amazing hitting skills. But that wicket will certainly provide them that belief that they can do it, RPC, pull it back their way. And here, it's very important for Abdullah Azhar to take that role of a senior batter and take them, see them through. Oh, what a delivery. Coming sharply in, back in, in fact. Not really happy with the effort, but I think that's sliding down. Akif Raj has been the only bowler throughout this evening who's found some movement. And that amount of movement, look at that, that came back very sharply. Probably missing leg, but nevertheless a good delivery. Unlucky that the keeper, Yasir Kaleem, couldn't get a hand to it. There will be a leg by, so... Not a bad over this from Akif Raja. And they brought him in to try and pick up a wicket here. This is a premier fast bowler. You expect him to try and create something for his team. Well, these, got, these two got to make sure that they don't use up too many dot deliveries. Keep rotating the strike. Just, it's just about that one boundary. One odd boundary that will settle a lot of nerves in the camp of UAE Kings 11. This is where RPC will have to be ultra-disciplined now. No more lapses in the field, no more ordinary deliveries. Every ball from here on, the next 33 balls will have to be on the money. Uh, just like that, just outside off, inviting the batter to play on the front foot of the Lazar. Hasn't looked himself, but he's been out there long enough to know what this pitch is doing. He's got to just make sure that he comes in line of the delivery. He's a very sweet timer of the ball. 
He's been gifted with that extra second to execute shots. And call lazy elegance. That's what he brings to the table. But he's got to make sure that he puts his hand up for his team here. Take them over the line. Just 7.3 and over required from here onwards. This is nice and straight, right behind the bowler. Should run away to the boundary. Good option to take with the mid-off up in the circle. The moment he saw it was full, Abdul Azhar is gone right behind the bowler. Not, not as full, but the execution was spot on. On the up, look at that. Not really a full delivery, but how well he gone through with that shot. Timing it beautifully and to the safest part of the area. Straight down the ground. Much required boundary for them. So really settling a lot of nerves, as I said, for in the camps of UAE Kings eleven. Bending his back there. Went quite high, surprising umpire Asif Iqbal hasn't called it a wide. He'll get away with that one, Akif Raja. But you were right, that boundary should settle some of the nerves. Five overs left, 36 required. An interesting finish coming up here at the Sharjah Stadium. It's going to be Zawar Farid, expensive first over. He'll be looking to make a comeback here. Naeem just watchfully playing it. Reminds me of my good old practice sessions in the nets. <laughs> nice little throw down, nicely behind that, getting used to the, the way we get that back down on your back foot. 36 of 29. They need a special over here, Royal Phoenix Clinic, if they are to pull things back. Slower delivery from Zawar Farid. Muhammad Naeem played that yesterday. And the ball arrived tomorrow. <laughs> Look at that. Very well disguised. Very well bowled. And Naeem, he had made up his mind before he delivered that ball. He wanted to go for it. Not in the right areas. So Muhammad Naeem, the fourth wicket down for UA Kings 11. At the wrong time, I must say. 140 for 4. Tahir Zaman, the new batter at number six, a very handy batter, but he's got a job in hand, especially against Zawar Farid, who can move the ball both ways. He's got a very mean, slower delivery as well. Yeah, it was that mean, slow delivery that got him the wicket. Zaman has done a good job with the ball in hand. Now he's turn with the bat. Oh, that's far outside off. Got it horribly wrong there. Yeah, freebie. Right when you want to create pressure, you can't be giving away those extras. This 35 needed of last 28. 7 is what the deficit is from the number of balls. It's just about hitting those couple of boundaries. Before it was 1, but few dot deliveries have pushed it up to couple of boundaries now. Very watchfully played. Going for that single. This can be a run out opportunity. And he misses the stumps there. He had all the time in the world to probably run him out on that occasion. Look, just in the end, take, trying to take the stumps out, missing it by quite a distance. Hesitation from the two batters. Yes and no. 
lack of communication. He did everything well until he threw the ball. I'm sure he could have run to the stumps and put in a dive. And could that be the difference here? They need those half chances. They need to create those opportunities. Rolf in his clinic. But how well has Farid bowled this over? He's just offered no pace whatsoever. It's been slow, slow and slow. Absolutely. Just two runs of the first three deliveries. Certainly some pressure building up in the center. With on offer. Not off the middle of the bat, but wide of that fielder at long off. Not great running. Every batter that has come out to bat newly, we've seen them. When they've gone for that drive, they've at least on a couple of occasions hit the toe end of the bat. And that tells you the nature of the pitch. It's on the slowest side. Threw with the shot too early. And only set batters like Yasir Kaleem, Khalid Shah and now Abdul Azhar are taking that extra second before they go for that shot. Takes the pace off. It's a pretty decent connection, but a good effort in the field by Salman Khan. They're putting in that dive, saving a couple of runs for his team. Yeah, I think that'll be the instruction from the skipper as well for Royal Phoenix Clinic. He'll be telling his fielders, look, we've just got just four overs left in this game. We'll try and give it our everything. If we save a single or two here and there, that could well be the difference here. 32 of 25, that deficit is still seven. Last ball of the over. A good one from Farid so far. Slower delivery, very well bowled again. Abdullah Azhar, despite spending quite a bit of time out there, still they didn't know too much about it. 32 required from 24, it's 144 for four. Side panel now to bowl the 17th over and the first ball is bowled, has been picked up and deposited by Zaman. Over long off for a maximum. That should calm the nerves, that should break the shackles, that should ease the pressure. 150 up. What a shot this is. Bowls with pace, Zayed Colonel. And to hit it towards that part of the ground takes some doing. What a statement this is from Zaman here. Hits a maximum. Really good shot. That was not an easy shot to execute. All the good work that Fariz did in the previous over has been undone with that maximum. And now they'll just look to milk it around, try and get 9 or 10 runs off this over. A smart batting from Zaman. Realize that he's got that boundary they wanted desperately. Picks up a single of the very next. Smart batting. Just 25 required now of 22 deliveries. Just about one boundary. And that should be game set and done for UA Kings 11, but don't discard Royal Phoenix Clinic here. They've got plenty of experience, plenty of smart operators up their sleeves. Outside off, looking to drive that without much footwork there, Abdul Azhar. Missing out on it completely. It's funny, Zayed Colonel is still choosing to go with a bit of pace here. He saw what Farid did in the previous over, and he's choosing to go with a bit of pace. There you go, that's the maximum. Nicely hit by Tahir Zaman. Not in the slot, but he's just generated so much power out of that one. Not of the middle of the bat as well. He could clearly see it was of the toe end of the bat, but still managed to get some distance on it. Shot. Does it have enough legs to clear that fielder? Yes, it has. Trickling away towards the boundary. A couple of runs taken in the process. I saw the length early there, Abdul Azhar. He pulled it well enough to go above the fielder inside the circle. Shorter boundary, so it did speed away quite quickly, but he's done a good job, the fielder, to trickle it back in to keep it to a couple of runs. Well, Rust on that occasion, though he read the pace early, but still got in an awkward position to execute that shot. Lucky for him to evade that fielder. 
A fuller delivery. This is going straight into the hands of the fielder. And that's taken. A very important wicket at a very important stage for Royal Phoenix Clinic. It's a set batter. He fell for the bait. Full outside off. Longer boundary. The lone fielder station there. And he's hit it straight to him. Good catch. They hold on to one. Royal Phoenix Clinic. And now, there will be a bit of pressure for UAE Kings 11. Abdul Azhar. He departs. At 17 of 22, it's 153 with half their side lost. Finding ways to come back into this game. Zayed Kernel with the latest wicket. He's got one delivery left in this over. Starts off with a low full toss. They are crossing over for the single. The field has taken some time to get across and now will manage to get off the mark and get that one run off the last ball. So he did give away quite a few runs, but he managed to pick up a wicket in that over. Zayed Kernel, he's done for tonight. But UAE Kings 11 are certainly not done. 22 required off the last three overs. It's 154 for five. Right then, Farid to bowl his third over. He's bowled well in the previous over that he did. Again, no pace at all whatsoever. The third man is inside the circle. Fine leg is inside the circle. It's a deep square leg, deep mid wicket, long on, long off. So protecting the boundary in front of the wicket is going to be full and slow. Hit me if you can is the message that he's offering to the batters. 22 from 17. One more wicket here will really, really put UA Kings 11 onto the back foot. They need a boundary. Slow again. Push straight to the fielder. He's taken off. There should be a chance. Well, Yasir Kaleem had to be at the stumps to try and pick that up. But living dangerously here is Nav Pavreja. Two dot balls now. 22 of 16. The pressure is certainly telling on the two batters out there. Yes, Tahir Zaman has hit a maximum in the previous over. But with the loss of that wicket, the jitters are back in. Look at that. Pushing it straight to the fielder who's very high up and close to the pitch. A direct hit there would have sent Nav straight back into the hut. Slow delivery again. Push towards long on this time. Will be another single. 21 required of 15. They need a boundary here. Zaman, he's already hit 1-6. Will he try to repeat that in this over or will he just watch out Farid, try and target the next over? No change in the field, will remain the same. Oh, he's looked to hit that to Ajman. That's how hard he went at it. But again, the change of pace from Farid coming to the fore here. Very nicely done here by Farid, he's completely understood what's required over here. And he's not offering any pace to the batters at all. And also bowling it on a good length where you really have to create all the power, generate all the power as yourself as a batter. This is high. The fielders are interested. Who's coming in for it? Lands safely. Be only a single. 20 of 13, it's getting a little difficult here for the batting team. They've done so well so far. But just in this last couple of overs, just like they did with the ball in hand, Kings 11, they pulled things back in those last few overs. RPC are also pulling things back in these last few overs. Batting hasn't looked easy at all. Awaited on the back foot. 
and push that towards long on will be another single. So Farid has bowled a brilliant couple of overs here, keeping things extremely quiet. 19 required off the last two. 157 off five for five. Yet another nail biter here at the Sharjah Cricket Stadium in the 35th Ramadan League 2024. Presented by Royal Phoenix Clinic. 19 required of two overs. Zaman and Naf of Reja, the two batters out there. Akif Raja bowled a good third over. Will now bowl out the penultimate over. Could well be the difference this over if UA Kings 11 can bring it down to less than 10 runs in the last over. They will feel quite comfortable. They need a boundary. Oh, that should be called a wide. Too far outside off. Akif Raja pointed to the batter saying he did reach it, but that was very far from the tram line, says umpire Asif Iqbal. And an extra run conceded here. That should help Kings 11. 18 of 12 now. They'll dearly hope they get a couple of boundaries in this over and then get ones and twos. And captain in conversation with Akif Raja. They will they certainly learn from what Farid has done here. Take the pace off. Be as straight as possible in line with the stumps. Get the batter to try and generate the power behind their shots. There's one fielder on the offside in the boundary line. Deep, steep extra cover. Nicely behind that. Playing it with soft hands and crossing over for a single. Giving the strike back to Tahir Zaman, who's already hit 1-6. He'll be hoping that he can get one in this over as well. Akif Raja will... One thing's for sure, he's, gonna not, he's not going to offer him anything in his slot. Third man is in the deep. And Midoff is up in the circle, so expect it to be shorter in length. But now, the third man has come up. Point has been pushed towards a very backward region, and Midoff goes down as well. Now the offside field is strengthened. Zaman come, Aryak Akif comes round the wicket on that occasion, pushes it across the right hand as Zaman has walked onto the offside. He was looking for a wide there from the umpire, but it will be a dot ball, an important dot ball for Royal Phoenix Clinic. Done very well in the last few overs to pull things back here, especially with the wicket of Khalid Shah. It's not been easy for the UAE Kings 11. They were looking very comfortable. At one moment, required some 44 or 40 at one time, but suddenly, with a couple of quick wickets that have fallen, it's looking tricky now for them. This one should be called a wide, yes. Sending it far across the right hand, coming around the wicket is Akif Raja, creating a very difficult angle for the batter. Asking him to try and go on the offside. He's got protection down there. Third man is up in the circle, so even an edge will be useful for the batter. 16 required of 10. Have to be disciplined here. RPC, they've done well to pull things back. Now can't afford to bowl too many wides and give extras. That's on the offside. Straight to the hands. Yes, it is. Farooq holds on to that. And the plan has worked for Royal Phoenix Clinic. Tahir Zaman saw the full outside off delivery, sliced it, and the fielder was pushed back just two deliveries ago just for a catch like that. Nicely planned and nicely executed. Another wicket falls. Tahir Zaman goes for 10. 1 6 in his innings of 10 runs of 8 balls. Now, RPC will certainly feel like they're back in this game. 160 for 6.
Matiullah Khan bowled three overs today. Now he needs to come and whack a couple out of the park. That's what his team wants from him. 16 required of nine. Akif in the last couple of overs and Farid, who will probably bowl the last over, have done brilliantly to pull the game back in favor of RPC. Still not too far for Kings 11. They just need one maximum or a boundary to ease things up here for themselves. But it's looked difficult for, the, for it to come. Cut away. Should be cut off by the fielder. Will only be a single. They won't mind this RPC. They want to block off the boundaries. They won't mind conceding the ones. Fifteen required of eight. It's enough for Vreja now on strike. Who's on four off six? He needs to somehow find a boundary in this next couple of deliveries. Get that run. Get that required score. Get those. With the target to below 10 runs in the last over, then it'll be really, really a close finish. And right now, RPC must be feeling extremely good in the way they've come back in this game. Oh, nicely chipped. Once again, it's gone to the fielder. One bump into the hands of Farooq. Not in control of that one, Nav. Looked to play in front of the wicket, but ended up catching the outside edge. He'd be glad he didn't carry to the fielder there. Now the third man has also gone down on the offside. So lots of protection being offered. And that's because Akif is bowling just outside that off stump line. Single conceded. 14 now required of the last seven deliveries. Is there a boundary here in this over? Will Matiullah be able to muster up the courage to try and go big? The leg side has been left vacant. Especially the boundary. The fielders are up in the circle. There's a deep, there's a square leg and a mid wicket. The moment you get it over them, Matiullah will look to probably shuffle across and try and go big. Important ball this. Misses it. And a dot ball to end what has been a brilliant 19th over. Superb stuff from Akif Raja, bringing all his experience to the fore. Mammoth task ahead now for Kings 11. 14 required in the last over. This is not going to be easy for UAE Kings 11. 14 required in the last over. It's going to be Farid to bowl out and bowl the last over. He's bowled brilliantly. One for 24 in his three overs. It's expensive in the first one. Gave away 17, I think. But in the last two overs, he's just mastered how this pitch behaves. And he's bowled brilliantly. Again, no space offered at all. Rolling his fingers through that one. And he'll go past the batter who's looked to hoik that across. Three fielders on the leg side, the longer boundary to the right-hander. So the cha the end on which he's bowling to has been nicely planned out by RCP, RPC. Deep square leg, deep mid wicket, and long on on that leg side to try and take that catch if it is hoiked by Nav. 14 off 5. Another slow ball chipped onto the leg side. They are ambling across for a single. Now they'll think about a second. They'll manage it. In the end, it seemed quite comfortable, but umpire Asif says, let's not take any risks at this point in the game. We'll check it upstairs. It seemed like they were all right, so here's another look. Yeah, it was well within by the time Yasir Kaleem took those bills off. So now 13 required, in fact, 12 required off the last four. They need a couple of boundaries here. In fact, two maximums will do it as well, but in the last few overs, boundaries have dried up. None of the batters have been able to clear the fence. And that's thanks to that man on your screen, Farid, who's bowled brilliantly. He's given away nothing to the batter. No pace to work with and nice and straight. Full again, outside off. Can't do anything about that. Nav Pavareja cuts a very frustrated figure there. 12 off 3 now. 
unless they hit two big sixes or at least three fours in the next three deliveries. It is rather unfortunate for Kings Lemon who were batting so well up until the 15th or 16th over. They've just completely given the advantage away. Thanks to that man who's bowling right now. He's been superb. Picked up onto the leg side. It's a longer boundary, so won't have the legs to carry. One bounce in the hands of Farooq. We keep it to a single. 11 off two. You need a six here to stay alive in the chase. Can Matiullah muster up the courage to clear one? Farid has offered nothing to the batters. He's chipped that towards mid-wicket. But once again, Farooq is out there, patrolling that cow corner. And only be a single now. Mathematically impossible for UA Kings 11, which is unfortunate because I thought they batted really well in the first part of this innings. But just in the last few overs, RPC have done brilliantly after the fall of Khalid Shah's wicket to put the pressure back on the batting team and almost drag victory out of the jaws of defeat. That's what good teams do and they are certainly a team filled with experience and class. Nicely done. Very, very nicely done. Block hole delivery to end the innings and Farid has come back very, very well to bring victory to his team here. In the first two, first over, he gave away 17 runs. In the next three overs, he gave away just nine runs. That's how, just 11 runs. That's how well he's done here, Farid. Brilliant bowling at the death by Royal Fainis Clinic. At one moment, it seems like UAU, it seemed like UAE Kings 11 were running away with the game, especially when Khalid Shah was striking it so cleanly. Look at that, 83 of 47. Khalid Shah at the top. And they, he started off with Fahad Nawaz, who made 30 of 15 at a strike rate of 200. But other than that, None of the batters were able to contribute and play long. What they needed was partnerships to at least go at runner ball, but none of the remaining batters were able to do that. Junaid, 5 of 9, couldn't get going. Abdullah Azhar, 17 of 22, couldn't get going. Naeem, unable to contribute. Thayil Zaman with that 1-6. But after that, especially after the wicket of Khalid Shah, the boundaries dried up. And RPC put on a masterclass of death bowling here, especially thanks to Farid, who was... Fantastic in the end. Ten extras they gave away. But they were expensive at the start, Zaid Karnal and Akif Raja, but their second spells is what brought them back in the game. Two wickets to Zaid Karnal, one to Akif Raja towards the end. Farid was the pick of the bowlers for me. Four overs, one for 28. Very well bowled in the last three overs. Asif was expensive with his spin, one for 45. Farooq, though, he was the one who got that first wicket. Provided that breakthrough, or break, broke the partnership at the top of the order and was economical as well. One for 23 in his four overs. So very well utilized the bowlers by the skipper of Royal Fairies Clinic. And that's what helped them restrict the UAE Kings 11 to 166 for six and go on to win this game quite comfortably in the end. Well, that's that then. We will take a few moments. To reflect on this math summary, Royal Phoenix Clinic, they won the toss, elected to, in fact, UA Kings 11 won the toss, elected to bowl first. Royal Phoenix Clinic making 175 for four, thanks to Yasir Kaleem at the top with 67 of 47. Farid contributing in the middle, 34 of 28. Salman also at the top with 27 of 23. Couple of wickets to Zaman, one to Mathi and one to Naeem. In reply, a solid innings from Khalid Shah and a good start by Fahad Nawaz, but unfortunately, the rest of the batters unable to really make good of that start that they were given. And Zaid Colonel Farooq and Farid did well with the ball in hand for Royal Phoenix Clinic to restrict Kings 11 to 166 for six and winning the game by nine runs. We'll take a couple of minutes of a breather and when we'll be back, it will be Adnan Arif with the post match presentation.
Check.
Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the post-match presentation of the 35th Sharjah Ramadan T20 League 2024, powered by Fancode. Before we begin, firstly, I'd like to thank Sharjah Cricket and all the administrators involved behind the scenes in putting up such a wonderful tournament. I'd also like to take this opportunity to thank our sponsors. Title sponsor, Royal Phoenix Clinic, powered by sponsor and official streaming partner, Fancode, even partner, TCM. Associate sponsor Thimar Al Madina Real Estate support sponsor seven districts. Well, in match number 19 of the tournament, Royal Phoenix Clinic has just defeated UA Kings 11 by nine runs. It went down the wire. Well, commencing ahead, we'll be moving to the man of the match presentation award, which will be presented by Mr. Tehseen Jawed, who's also the match referee. Well, few commendable performances from both the team, but in the end, it was the effort with the bat by none other than Yasser Kaleem for his brilliant performance, 67 runs. Of just 47 deliveries, five fours and three sixes in that. What an innings that was. He took a little bit of time early on, but then he batted beautifully in the end. Yasser, can I have you here for a couple of words? Well, firstly, man of the match, how are you feeling? Uh, it's good to be back in the domestic circuit. Been out for uh, five or six months. So it's good to be back, you know, sc scoring runs for the team and ultimately team is winning. So that's a good thing for us. Right, as you said, you've been off the domestic circuit. Tell me about what was happening when you were taking that off. Uh, actually, a couple of teams for which I was playing for, you know, they had to shut down. So, and then I had to travel for, to US for a tournament or so. So, I was just out of the UAE for some time. And uh, it's a kind of a circuit where, you know, you're out of sight, out of mind. So, when you come back, you don't have a team. So, Anvilla, this Phoenix has started and they, it's a good team. Hopefully, we can take the full season and play for it. Right, then first 50 for you in the tournament. In your third game, you'll be feeling a lot relieved. But what was going on in the field when things were not going your way? Uh, it's not the same charger wicket which used to be. It's not a you know stat paddler wicket which you know the ball is little stopping onto the wicket. The ball wicket was a little soft. So you have to you know um, stay on the wicket, take your time, and ultimately you know you have to trust yourself, back your skill, and uh, ultimately the things will fall into the place. Well, good to see you getting among those runs. Good luck for the rest of the matches. Thank you. Thank you very much. Man. And that was Yasser Kaleem, man of the match from game number 19 from Royal Phoenix Clinic. Well, thank you for joining us, but don't go away. We've got another match lined up for you next. It's Karwan CC taking on CSS Group.